Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connell Cardenas. And per usual, I just want to make sure that you guys are heading to the shop here in North Park, San Diego. That's right. I'm talking about 3072 El Cajon Boulevard. We are open Tuesday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Sundays, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we are closed on Mondays for roasting to bring all that amazing coffee to all you amazing people around the world who keep enjoying it and giving us a reason to come back every single day. So guys, cruise on into the to the cafe. Me or Natasha will be making you any type of latte that you want, cold brew, espresso, whatever you need, and you can also get any types of bags of coffee. The Issa Blend, the Alcohol Boulevard, the Ben Deshaunis, and we have some new coffees coming. It's really, really dope. I'm really, really excited. And also, if you guys want any mugs or merch, you can get that everything. You can get all of that here. So guys, cruise on in today. Come by. Come say what up to you, man. Come kick it. Have a coffee or just like, you know, shoot the shit with me. Either way, pull up. All right, my guests today are some of my favorite musicians, I guess musicians, I would say, in San Diego right now. Of course, I'm talking about Wino Club, and Wino Club is a collective of DJs that is here in San Diego, and they're kind of killing it as of late, and I have to say, I am the biggest fan. They became a really big part of my life every single Wednesday since ah, a little bit before summer up until now, current day. That's why they're on the show. And of course, I'm talking about my man, Derek, who started it, and then Nisa. And it was a great conversation. It was a fun conversation. It was a little out there in terms of what we were talking about, but I loved it, and I enjoyed it, and I, it was just so, so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. So guys, without further ado, my homies, Derek, Nisa, Wino Club, baby. It's your time to shine, homies. Let's go. And we're live. Derek and Nisa. What up? Welcome to Caffeine and Green, guys. Hello. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Fuck yeah, guys. <laughs> Boom. Oh, we all got our fancy glasses. Yo, we only doing stem wear in this bitch. I like that. It's very true. You know what I'm saying? Guys, I am so excited you are here today. I'm not even going to lie. I was actually really, really looking forward to today. Thank you. We were too. Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I just, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, you guys are a part of essentially like a DJ collective, right? That's essentially what it is. Yeah. You guys go by the name of Wino Club as a collective group. How many... Yes. How many people are in the group total? That's countless. I don't know. Countless. There's a lot. But it's like, I mean, you're in it, man. You've participated in what we're doing. So I don't know. It's just everyone. Everyone who comes to the park is in the club, in my opinion. But yeah. if you're talking about like core DJs. Yeah, the DJs more. It's um, like Chris, Nisa, Justin, Veronica. We even got people like um, Robert. Nate comes out consistently. Um, Aborera, Aborera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck yeah. Uh, uh, Malik, we'll count Malik in. Whoa. Marcellus. Um, if I'm missing anyone, I'm sorry, but yeah, there's there's yeah. A, a group like I mean, a group I like of people. Yeah, they're all the homies, you know. Like, you guys all met just through like doing music. Um, or spinning. All different ways really yeah a lot of the time i met um a lot of like nisa chris and veronica was through work initially and then uh yeah all the rest of the people i met somehow through wino it was just they just started coming like it attracts uh, like-minded people i guess you know and then they all came For and sure. now they hang out yeah <laughs> now they hang out yeah. <laughs> well okay so let's give a breakdown so for everybody who doesn't know uh you know Every Wednesday, you can go to Morley Field pretty much from 2 p.m. Uh, about till about sunset. And dude, in summer, when it's almost 9 o'clock, when it's dark, yo, you're <laughs> sitting there for hella days. Yeah. I wouldn't even get there till like 5 sometimes because I got off of work. But yeah. then I'm out in the park until like 8.45. <laughs> Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> dude, imagine us. We're there till like from 2 to the end. Yeah. So we're like blasted by the time it's time to pack up and go i've dude. had some fucked up days yeah. i can curse right we can yeah, curse. yeah dude hell yeah i've had some i've had some yeah pretty bad days out in the park yeah. <laughs> some bad days yeah yeah <laughs> like it started off good and then you were uh, just like, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm 
throwing up later that night type shit. Oh. Like I just get too <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, like, it's just vibes are too nice. And, Dude, the vibes are unreal. And I really want to just like kind of, you know, for everybody who doesn't know, it just sounds like we're getting fucked up, which I mean, essentially kind of. No, it's, it's but responsible. It's, we're it's responsible, responsible yeah. and it's definitely, but it, it, the, the vibe is like you show up, you get to Morley Field, you camp out your spot and there's always space for everybody. There's usually like there's families, there's yeah. grips of homies, there's people with grills, there's actually like food vendors, there'll be wine vendors sometimes. There's a, like you guys set up and you do your music and it's literally just on like a regular table and you're spinning and you're like people come in with different vibes and the DJ switch, switches over. Like sometimes there's some, just some vibey ass music and then there's like some kind of EDM and then there's like some reggae and then, you know, jazz, or like whatever. There's always a vibe. Right. And then you're, you're posted with your homies and before you know it, it's just like, I don't know. We're in your own, we're in our own little world out there. I feel like at least for me when we're out there and then it's, you know, the lights start going out and then people started bringing like little fucking like twinkle lights and then like candles and stuff like the, yeah, the fake candles. I seen tables, dude, it's people about tables. It yeah. was such a vibe and it was like, dude, this is something else. And it became a thing where like, dude, every Wednesday I'm fucking there, like, that's the spot to you be. You did come consistently. Dude, every you week. Yeah. Every, dude, I'm not even kidding you, bro. That's why I want to have you guys on. Like, low-key, I just wanted to, like, kind of just share with you how important Wine Old Club Wednesdays is for me in my life. Like, yo, so that's sick. my midweek reset. Like, so no sick. cap. I sit there, and I'm like, okay. Oh I can chill and like relax. Dude, I, sometimes I see some of my regulars <laughs> out in the park, and I'm just, fuck, like, yeah. smoking a fat twist. I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Dude. Okay, so why? Like who created Wino Club and why? Uh that would just be me and some other people were doing it originally. Um we just out in the park hanging out. Like we both had the same days off. So we were like you know, you want to go to the park and listen to some records. And I was like, I got the wine, you know, that was pretty much how it started. And then, so you would just pack up your, your records, bring your speakers and just post in the park and play anyways, just like, yeah, for you guys to do it. They would just, yeah, it would just be like, uh, like four of us or something like that. Or something, you know? And then like, uh, it was, it was sort of the same exact setup as what was happening, except like minus the table. And then like, Whoa. Like a lot of the times, like I would just be like Chris Koch applesauce on the floor, like pretty high and just uh, like, I, like no one was watching me. So I would put headphones on like this. Yeah. And I didn't really care about um, who was listening. So it'd be like, I would be playing with it. And I never DJ before that. So that was the start of DJing for me. Oh, just really? Sitting, yeah. Just sitting on the floor in the park and, and uh, trying it out on mushrooms. Pretty oh, much. Mushrooms. Yeah, I learned how to DJ on mushrooms, we can say. Cause I, was, <laughs> I was pretty consistently doing mushrooms back then, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when you're doing that, are you taking, like, microdosing? Or you yeah, it wasn't a lot. It was, like, maybe, like, a gram or something like, like that. Yeah, a gram, like, gram yeah. point five maybe. Yeah. To the point where, like, maybe the music is going and, like, dude, I went to the Rady Shell and... That place is dope. Dude, I, I did some mushrooms and was there, and I was, like the music was playing and I remember I was just looking at the towers, the, the Marriott towers that are right there to the right. Yeah. And they were dancing. And I yeah. remember just watching the towers more so than watching the show. And I was like, damn, I was there, yeah, with I've my homie there. who was standing next to me, I think, or like somebody, whoever I was with, I don't remember, but I was like, yo, the buildings are dancing. Like, yo, yeah. this is tight Who as did fuck. you go see? I don't even know, dude. Yeah. I don't remember. It was recently. It was this summer when it was hot as yeah. fuck, you know, okay, just, nice. I think it might've been flume. Yeah, it's like a DJ. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a DJ. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's a DJ, like a super like, ding, ding, ding. you know, like I don't know, right. it's weird stuff. Yeah. Either way, but uh, so, what you know, what was happening for you when you were like, was it just like the vibes were just being amplified by the mushrooms, and then you were just like finding good tracks, or were these music, was this music you were already listening to, and you were just like finding a way to blend them. I don't even, I don't even know. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, I just play, we just play whatever I had. Um, I didn't have a huge 
collection when we first started. I def obviously I've grown my record collection since then, but uh, how I don't know how I would pick them. It would just be <laughs> whatever I had. I'd bring it. Yeah, and then it'd be like, oh, I just you know, I'd want to hear this shit. You know. Like, but so you already have maybe a better better way to explain it would be like. Or to ask a question is like, do you already have like a genre of music or do you like what kind of music inspires you to like choose the sets that you're doing? Mm. So I will say, yeah, I've never really like, had an idea for what I'm going to go up there and do. So I will bring oh, but nearly I wouldn't say all my records. I bring a good amount of records just to have a wide variety of random shit. I mean, a lot of it is based on what I listen to in real life, like at the time, like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like what I'm cruising around to and listening to or what I'm listening to, when I'm smoking or just taking a shower, like whatever, like whatever I'm listening to is probably going to reflect what you're going to hear at any given time in the park, at any venue you see me at, whatever, like, so that's more likely because then I'll just go out and buy records based on what I like. So, it's always just whatever I'm literally feeling at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm listening to gospel, that's what you're going to hear. If I'm listening to rap, that's what you're going to hear. Fuck yeah. Yeah, whatever. What about you, Nisa? Uh, honestly, I really play kind of like whatever. Low-key for a moment, I feel like all the records that I had were all very cohesive with one another. Like, mm -hmm. I could play my whole crate and it, I could make it sound just like very like mixed very well if i really wanted to depending on what songs i played but yeah i mean especially at the park i feel like we have more it's it's just more of a like at your liberty type thing you know like play what you want do you want to hear this play that you know there's no set like rule of what you have to play or you know the like like if we go somewhere and someone asks us to spin then that's different because they kind of want to set kind of like vibe you know it's usually like hip-hop r&b whatever yeah but like at the park it's just kind of like play whatever there's been times yeah. where like we've switched from one crazy genre to another oh and yeah especially with like how different all of us kind of are within our own music sense there's been that like especially switching from like an EDM DJ, like we have Marcellus or Chris, who are mostly like house kind of electronic, whatever. And then you switch to us, and then you can be switched to Derek, and it's like full is gospel, rap, soul, you know, jazz, whatever. It's, it's just kind of like whatever. So I never really thought about it at the park. I think the only times I really would think about it is like when we're asked to be somewhere. You know, because we, we got certain things to follow. But even when I go record shopping, I kind of like, I look through everything. Sick. So. That's it, dope. Yeah, if I find something and I find something, it doesn't matter what the genre is really. Like, I don't particularly go into the store and I'm like, okay, I need to find this, that, and the third. It's just more like, okay, I'm going to go through everything and I'm going to find what I find. And we'll see how it goes from there. <laughs> Do you ever blindly buy a record? Oh, absolutely. Maybe, like, maybe knowing the artist or completely not knowing the artist? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But you just find it in maybe, like, that section. So if it's, like, yo, it's gospel or it's funk, but you'd never heard of them, you're like, oh, I'm going to run this anyways. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's funny, too, because we were, like, talking about it the other day. Like, there's just certain things that you'll start to look out for when you're looking at, like, random records, even if you have no fucking idea what is who it is who yeah. where the what what the uh, record label is or anything like that i kind of just mostly look at the year the genre and that's really it and then i'll kind of just go based off of that and then if i like it i like it and i don't i don't and i try my hardest to find a lot of the stuff that i like find randomly in the crates like on my phone to listen to it before but a lot of times you can't because it's so random so there's been plenty of times where I've just been like, you know what? Uh, a lot of times it's like $5, $10. Like, it's not that, cra that crazy expensive of a record. So it's like, what do you have to lose, you know? Dude, that's dope. So but yeah, you could like, record label is like a big thing. Yeah. If you know the record label that's and they think true. they're dope, you don't need to know the artists. They probably are dope. Even producers. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different ways of picking records, but... Um, yeah, like she said too. There's like your own way of picking them too. Like uh, certain, certain, you know, 
flags come up where you're like, I I know this is gonna be fire because yeah. the cover has got you know blah blah blah. <laughs> the <laughs> cover's got this. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, like any cover with a naked woman, I'm buying. <laughs> <laughs> There's like certain things like like that's probably dope. Like the probably music's probably fire. And then uh, for gospel, there's certain cues you know that I look for. Oh yeah. It's just like that. Like you just, it, you get to sort of find shit your own way. Yeah. It makes it fun. You know what I mean? Dude. Yeah. I, when I'm searching for video, like for music content for videos that I'll do for the shop or anything, I'll straight up listen to beats on YouTube for hours. Just listening to beats, listening to beats, like just having it on the background and then eventually one will pop up and I'm like, Oh wait. And then like, I'll be editing and I'm like looking and like, I'll, I'll flag that one or I'll find an artist that I know and then I'll start going through their videos and like listening to their tracks or their playlist and I'm like damn yeah sick I can use this one because it's like like can you know profit free or something like that or like whatever not for not profit or something like that very interesting stuff but I've never like really dabbled in records but I, I find myself when I do look through you a record the, show you got the Nipsey Hustle dude uh, you know what's funny? I wanted to bring that up, that you and I, to me, it was super funny. when I, At the grand opening, when it was winding down, I was like, yo, do you got any nip? And you're like, I got no nip. And I was like, yeah. I had just been <laughs> gifted that for the grand opening. Yeah. And I handed it to you. I was like, open it up, dude. Let's fucking play that shit. Yeah, and you were yeah. like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you sure you want to open this? And I was like, fuck yeah. I was like, I got a fucking mural of this full in the shop. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, but you were like, you have to open it, though. I forget what song you wanted. To Dude, play. hustle and motivate. That's right. Yeah, that song is tight. I have since seen it in the thing and have thought about you and been like, I sort of want to buy this record because it's it's sick. Dude, the entire it's a double yeah. double record. Yeah, gatefold, and it's seriously so good. Yeah. The, the entire album. I mean, for it for it to be his last album, it was the best. It was legendary. one of his best. Yeah, yeah. super legendary. Definitely prolific as well. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Okay, so guys, another thing for me, I mean, another reason why I wanted to have you guys on is that I just, I have a love for music. And I mean, I know you guys obviously do. Especially with how good the playlists, I mean, dude. For everybody who's listening around the world, if you ever get to come to San Diego during the time that they're doing it, like, I'm telling you, I tell everybody I know. I do. And it's like, yeah. if they don't go, that's their fucking fault. And that's fine. I, appreciate I done that. told you. Like, yeah. you need to go. But um, I love music. I absolutely love music. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing I take yeah. a lot of pride in is that like people come in, they're like, yo, it's a vibe in here. And I will tell you, there has definitely been times when I'm at Wino Club and I'm like, what's this song? And I just hold up my phone and then I'll be playing that song in the shop, like yeah. straight up. You guys are part of the vibe. But what inspires like your music taste? Was there ever like any moment where you were like, yo, I'm gonna fuck with this. This is like, it's just because for me, it's always been that way. Like I listen to music from sun up to sundown all day, all night, no matter what. And, um, I just have like, I just love it so much. So does that, does that tra translate with you guys or like, do you, do you guys have the same feelings or? Oh yeah, for sure. Fuck yeah. I low key feel like, I mean, I feel like I've always been a pretty musical person mm -hmm. just in my sense of music, not particularly playing an instrument or anything like that. I've never been that talented. Or yeah, anything. yeah. But I've always loved music. I'm very blessed to have grown up with parents who are very, you know, with the shits when it comes to music. Like, I grew up on a lot of, like, rap, R&B, soul, like, reggae. Um, That's dope. I grew up on like classic rock and fucking house music. Like I was exposed to very, very like, I guess you could say prominent artists now in music, like that a lot of people will look back and be like, they inspire me to do whatever I'm doing. So that kind of like, because of those introductions into like very, I guess, I don't want to say mainstream, but like very well-known artists within particular genres, like, it opened me up to wanting to listen to other stuff too. So I remember I like created a SoundCloud when I was like 13 <laughs> and I was just like going crazy on SoundCloud, listening to like random shit, not even from any artist particularly, but I was just like finding stuff from, you know, I was really into house music at the time when I was like really young. So I was super listening to like just random mixes that people were making and shit. Mm -hmm. And then through there, I would find different artists and songs that I like. So a lot of the music that I was finding was from mixes on SoundCloud. That's how, so how sick. You? 
I'm 23. And how old were you then? When 13. You were doing this? Okay. So it was like 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. So like all of all of that, I, w- I was just like, damn, like I'm I'm just gonna start listening to mixes. So then it turned into this obsession of like f- wanting to find mixes on SoundCloud and finding music from that. And then yeah, I just started listening to a bunch of like random shit and then one day i remember i literally remember this so vividly i told myself i was like i want to listen to brazilian music like i've never dabbled in it never heard of anything like that so like then some I started portuguese listen- shit like, yeah so yeah. then i started listening to brazilian music and then that fully opened up this whole avenue of like jazz i've never heard of or you know just a bunch of shit that i never heard of so it kind of Honestly, it kind of started with my parents. Shout out to them, because low-key, like, I wasn't listening to, like, whack shit growing up. So that's cool. <laughs> well, dude, you're 23. I mean, your your introduction to music, you have, like, the best shit. Like, like holy shit. Dude, wait, so what year were you born? I was born in 99. 99? I'm Damn. super baby. I dude, know. So I get it. I heard it all. No, but like 99, no, I was going to say is like, okay, top dome like right now eminem eminem's one of the best rappers like just in general yeah old stuff Legendary. new stuff not so much but old stuff for sure but like dr dre you had you had chronic 2001 by 99 yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying like you dude, had- i remember being in kindergarten okay probably kindergarten first grade my mom's taking me on a field trip okay she's a chaperone for my field trip whatever there's kids in my class in my in my mom's car Talking about my mom is bumping Lil Wayne. Yo, which Carter? <laughs> Lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> she was literally bumping that. And she, I remember my mom telling the kids in the back, like, don't tell your mom. Don't tell your parents yeah. that I'm playing this in the car. That's Yo. funny. But That's yeah, lit. like, and shout out. Dude, my mom is like my fucking best friend. She took me to my first music. She took me to my first concert. Okay. Sick. Which no is doubt. what? No doubt. Yes. No doubt. Damn. I saw No fun. Doubt. Yeah, I was so obsessed with No Doubt at the time. I was like eight years old, dude. Yeah. Speaking of, I so I don't want to break the whole thing, but this is like I've never haven't really told anyone publicly, but this is, that's what I want my DJ name to be. No Doubt. Is no is uh, DJ Spin Stefani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I never said that before, but yeah, I think that would be a cool DJ name because I don't Spence have a Stephanie DJ name really, so but. I Dude, think that'd be funny. Great. That I, I always thought you were just vinyl club. I just thought yeah, you were essentially, vinyl. yeah. It's You're just I, vinyl. I'm a faceless person, but yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. If I ever wanted to go, spin, spin Stefan. Yeah, that would be the thing. It's. I think you should go for it. Speaking I think you should do it. Yeah, I like that name. <laughs> it's great. I don't want to cut you off. Sorry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DJ Spin Stefani. I thought it was always That's funny. That's a great name. No. Dude, no. Where was the first concert at? It was at the Cricket Wireless. Damn, down in Chula? When it was Cricket Wireless. Now it's like Sleep Train or whatever. But yeah, it was was at the Cricket Wireless. Oh, damn. Amphitheater, yeah. And then after that, I was like, but that's why it trips me out when people are like, I've never been to a concert Mm -hmm. ever in my life. Are you kidding me? I've all that's I feel like that's all I've ever known. First like, concert, no doubt. Yeah, and then after that I that's went to hitter, I went to a lot of other concerts. I went to like smaller concerts and then I was I turned um, 15. Excuse me, and my mom was like Let's go to Coachella. <laughs> what? So then I went to Coachella 2015 and 20 No, 2014 and 2015. Damn. I think so, yeah. Did I think I went to that one too? Wait, who was the headliner your your those years? Did I think one I'm pretty years, sure I went to 2015 because that was one of the years. It was like Nas and like Arcade Fire. No, the one when I went, it was like Ice Cube was a headliner. I seen Snoop Dogg that year. Disclosure was there. Major Lazer was there. Major Lazer brought out Sean Paul from the motherfucking dead also too. Dude. Which was crazy. Damn. Dude, I saw DJ Snake and he brought out um, DMX and fucking. <laughs> he did. Uh, what song did he fucking do? Oh, he did the Rough Riders anthem. Of course. And then uh, he brought out Ray Shmurda or whatever and they did I Don't Got No Type in the fucking yeah. big Sahara tent or whatever. Dude, that shit. Damn. Dude, talk about just like people like controlling the crowd. Dude, everybody knows all the words to that entire song. And if you don't, you at least, <laughs> yeah. like, I don't got no time. And you literally hear like <laughs> 90,000 people just like, I 
got no time. It's I, say, I don't know that song. What? No, I don't know that one. Uh, <laughs> shut the fuck. Oh, Derek, Derek, Derek's very. Uh, I don't know that song. You don't know <laughs> that song? He, he, he knows a lot. It's DMX. He also knows and no, like it's Ray. I don't know how to say their last it's name. It's Ray Shremmerd. Sh- yeah, Ray Shremmerd. It's like. It's a duo, right? I know yeah, it's, a, it's yeah, the duo. Yeah, like brothers or something. Yeah, but I, uh, I don't know their music. Dude, they do this song. It's like, I don't got no time. They did Bad the Black Bitches Beatles is shit. the only one. Uh, is the. Oh, wait. Bad yeah, Bitches like, is the only thing that I like. Dude, yeah, yeah no, I've never heard were, that before. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, you don't remember when people were doing like that oh, black beetle shit and it was like sl- they were all like stopped yeah and maybe took a video. maybe let's if I play heard it real it, quick you know, i'm gonna play know. it real quick this is never i don't usually do this on the show but for the sake of conversation hold on let me hear the tape wait can you hear this i'm playing it for him guys Yo, no nah, i never heard this one. what <laughs> dude anybody listening like, is gonna what? be like Bro, damn. I don't know. Dude, you don't that. know this song, <laughs> no, bro. <I'm> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Okay. I've never. Maybe if I heard it, I wasn't like even recognizing it. But no, I've never. That does not sound familiar to me at all. That's Dude, crazy. that was the anthem for seriously 2015. Like, okay, so it was 2016. I, I went because I feel like the next year it was already old, but everybody had already known it. So DJ Snake played it, yeah, and it was like. Well, yeah, oh, you know what happened? I wasn't listening to rap at that time. I, from 2013 uh, to 2016, I listened to absolutely no no rap music except for I listened to Kendrick Lamar's The Pimple Butterfly. There was like a couple albums that slipped through, but the, I didn't listen to any rap music from for three years. What straight. did you listen to? I was a lot of like um, soul R and B. No, it was a lot of. That's when I really started diving into jazz. I listened to a lot of jazz. I listened to a lot, yeah, like um, I had a big Bill Withers phase. Mm. Bill Withers is the man. I was doing a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I, that's when I really try to find shit, other shit, because I guess high school was all rap. You know what I'm saying? Like from eighth grade to, I guess we'll get into it. Music history time. Just right? go, baby. I'm fucking yeah. down. His parents, parents were like, um, my mom likes a lot of like Van Morrison. If you listen to Van Morrison, yeah. and like Elton John, and a lot of those people. And my dad was into a lot of like uh, Eric Clapton. And like a lot of like blues rock coming out of the sixties, seventies okay. in like England. Um and I'm the oldest, so I I went and and tried to listen to rap music and my mom said no. <laughs> she listens to the interview too, and she she texts me when I say funny things about her, but <laughs> she uh she yeah, she said no, I couldn't listen to any rap. So then I, I went and listened to a lot of like um like slipknot. Dude, I love slipknot. Yeah, that was like my first like, cause around the, when you're like 11, 12, 13, like, is when you start listening to your own music, I think, you know? So, like... That's fair, yeah. So, that I went from the Van Morrison, Eric Clapton, to, like, heavy Slipknot and stuff like that. <laughs> and then rap music made my way into my life again. Did and no one, no one said no. No one said yeah. no after that? They were like, yeah. boy, this is way, that way was just, nicer. It was just my own Saw thing, you. yeah. Yeah, for Saw sure. You. As soon as I heard, like, A Tribe Called Quest, that was game over. Oh, really? Oh, for a fact. I thought I was like, there's nothing else I need to listen to. And then, uh, but then it, like it was an eighth. So that was eighth grade for me. So that was like, um, a kid named Cuddy had come out at that time. So I was listening to a lot of that mixtape and then high school came and that was that whole wave of all the famous rappers, you know, Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, Dude. Oh, yeah. Kanye yes. West had his tear through my middle school and high school years. Same. Uh, yeah. A lot of like the Joey Badass. Stuff Damn, like that. Currency nice. was currency was hot. I remember going to see rap shows at Porter's Pub at UCSD. That oh. was for anyone that was in the town <laughs> around those years. That was the premier rap concert. Dom Kennedy. Ooh. I saw Dom Kennedy at Porter's Dude. Pub. That was fucking wow. the coolest thing. 420 show. That was my first rap concert. But uh, yeah, and it's just been rap rap from all throughout high school, and then ever since then was I try to switch it up, listen yeah. to other things, and that was through 16. So that's why I probably missed that. I missed a lot of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I just was like I tuned out for a minute. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes so that explains why I don't know those people. I mean, dude, you got to I mean, like you're not missing a whole lot, <laughs> but I mean, like, that's definitely a turn up anthem for sure. I mean, ninety thousand people for sure. You're not Coachella, like yeah, they got it. I mean, it was it was a vibe for sure. That's what they get paid to do. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, dude. Coachella is something else. I've never been to that either, man. I mean, that also not yeah. missing a lot. Really? I, there's, I think for you, dude, for you, I feel like 
outside lands. It would be like I don't know that way means. more yeah, chill. No, knowing Derek. <laughs> In the woods and shit. Like, yeah. That's dude. That's totally your vibe. Yeah. I've been to like, outside lands multiple times. For as far as festivals go, I went to that smokers club. That was that was all right. But uh I would like to go to like the Monterey Jazz Festival and stuff like that. Ooh. Like that I think would be my favorite probably. Yeah. Like that would be cool. Uh, Cause they get cool, I think, and like the Blue Note Jazz Festival, Ooh. like those are would be fun. But um, yeah. there was a dude. There was a fucking jazz festival recently. It was like hosted by Dave Chappelle and like Erica <gasps> Badu had DJ sets and stuff like that. But it would be like Kamasi, Kamasi Washington, and, and like all these like crazy jazz artists, Robert Glasper. Like that would be, I think, more my speed at this point. As I get older, I, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like like I love rap music. It's probably my favorite, but I don't like the vibes of like rap shows anymore like they're too Dude. they're too gnarly and i do too many psychedelics to like be wrapped up in like aggressive energy at a rap concert you know what it's i'm fair. saying like super fair so like i love the music but i would i would much rather go see some shit like a jazz concert or like you know like krung bin or something like they're like shit like dude that, that, that would be like, so oh. live i've seen them, I've seen them at in SCSU. what yeah How and then i saw know? uh you know what speaking of the shell i saw uh hiatus coyote and flying lotus i i saw that i saw yeah. that and i was looking at it i was like uh as i saw them that at shit. i saw them dude i don't know if it was like coachella or is that outside lands i saw them you saw them yeah mm -hmm. okay cool but yeah see that's more shit my speed now it's like i want to see some sh i want to see some cool shit uh I, I still, I'll still go see rap shows, but like, yeah, like it's like completely different now. Dude, did yeah. you ever go to North Park <clears throat> Observatory when they were still doing the rap shows? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've seen tons of rap shows at the observatory. <sighs> Dude, I saw Gucci Mane there. Nice. When Gucci got out, and oh, there, wow. there, there was. Dude, I'm talking. Nobody bumping each other in the crowd. Hell of space. Got super close. Blunts being passed, and Gucci's just doing trap house three like crazy. Dude, it was unreal. I saw. The whole Wu Tang there. Yeah, sick. I saw fucking dude. Want to talk about some new age hip hop shit? I saw Lil Uzi Vert there. Wow. Oh, wow. And they, you know, cut it off. They were like, "Yo, you know where the bar is?" They're like, "Yo, you can't go past the first pillar with your drinks. Twenty one and over oh, only, wow. right here." And so uh, I was. It was like me and my ex were standing up there, and I was like, "I guess we'll just stay up here." And yeah. then we finished our drink to like make it down a little bit further. Dude, the entire floor was packed with like. 18 year olds or something right and yeah. they were singing every song mm -hmm. and this fool had straight up two big ass gucci bags just laced around him and he's just jumping around the stage and i was like yeah that dude's high energy i seen him dude yeah he went to and complex it, con and yeah he's high energy dude it, vibe vibe i yeah. love it but dude i'm like this is this is that new hip-hop shit this is yeah. not gucci yeah <laughs> like, it's just for a sure it's just a completely different genre at that point yeah, like, it is so where versatile. The, the time that gucci mean was coming up and to where lil uzi was coming up like i remember when i heard when i first heard lil uzi's first song on soundcloud like p's and q's or? no it was called 7 a.m damn 7 a.m it literally had like this random ass cover art like it was just a single and it was on his soundcloud same thing with Lil Yachty. Like, I remember when Lil Yachty dropped his song that fucking put him on the map, basically. Like, Dude, a lot of. Lil Yachty. It's, 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 it's great. It's great. No, I, I completely agree. I'm not. Dude, no, no. I just. No, I've, I fucking. I fuck with Lil Yachty. But, like, it's just Lil Yachty. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if you know what I mean, though. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, though, sound. I do know he rapped over that Cortex sample. Yeah. Which is crazy. Fucking. I don't know. SoundCloud put a lot of. A lot of people on. Dude, Lil Pump came from SoundCloud. Yeah, Smoke Perp came from SoundCloud. Like, there's so many artists. There's That's there. Dude, isn't the that SoundCloud Takashi ever. too? Takashi came from SoundCloud, wasn't he? I don't I know. I have no clue. He got signed to some Russian label because of his SoundCloud or YouTube, and then that fucking skyrocketed him to do his like. I don't even oh, now. I don't even remember his. I don't know. I feel like yeah. I feel like East Coast New York rap is like from one extreme to the motherfucking other. Like, they're going to this like real rappy like old school vibey shit. And then they go to like super trappy, like they're dude, yeah. bot type shit, you know? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. dude, there's, but there's some like that heavy metal dude talking about it's, it's a different genre at this point, dude, 
there's straight up there's the hip hop root right there's the fucking tree yeah. right and now there's all these like divisions and the branches that like come off the same same tree different yeah. branch yeah. you know you got lo-fi hip hop and you got all this other shit and then all of a sudden you go on this New York type shit where they call it like there's this rapper his name is like Zilla Cam and it's <laughs> essentially like heavy metal death rap or something like that and I've dude heard, the videos yeah, are fucking like crazy they yeah. all have these grills but they're like fangs almost but all of Sick. them like the jigsaw kind of <laughs> and, <they're fucking, laughs> and they're talking about doing That's like crazy funny. shit yeah, it's crazy. rap jewelry is sick music is loud dude <laughs> i love it dude, dude they just came out of the book do you know that uh you know that um art public like publisher that what is it like tosh tosh yeah tosh came out with this book called hip-hop jewelry <gasps> uh-uh it's sick as fuck it's just it's just yeah hip-hop just exactly what it is it just serves off people's jewelry Dude, okay, you That's guys funny. both have chains, and I've been looking. I'm not even gonna lie. I've been looking at my first chain, and I'm, and I was looking at it, and I was like, damn. Okay, Cuban link or this, <laughs> like, how to do it? Like, look at it, dude, dude bro. Right I've been on. looking tough, and I was just like, cause you, no, it's not gonna be big. It's gonna be a little right. small ass one. But dude, even my other roaster, Natasha, shout out. She's the fucking. She's the best. But she, we were roasting at the uh, at the roastery on Monday or yesterday. And all of a sudden I looked up because I seen something shining from her chest and I look up and she has a fucking name, like her name and like a gold chain. I was like, yeah, yo, what? I was like, you always had that. She's like, no, I got it for Christmas. I was like, yo, so sick. I was like, damn, I need a chain. Yeah. Like, I mean, you don't need one, but no, it's, it's maybe cool. I guess it's definitely needed. I never take off my jewelry. My jewelry is like. That's why when I lost my records, I, I made the, the analogy of, like, it's like a piece of jewelry to me. Because, it's like I ne- like, it's, like, I feel naked. <laughs> so naked without it. Never take off my rings. My earrings are always on. My nose ring is always on. My necklace is always on. I got toe rings and an anklet. Like, <laughs> Damn, for real? Oh, you serious? <laughs> <laughs> they never come off. Yeah. Dude, That's I need funny. to. I've been I've been looking at them tough, and I want to get two rings. I want to get this. Dude, I want a pinky one, but I got some small ass pinkies. On. I used to get, okay. used to get the right okay. size. Well, get do it like nobody you makes a five a and a half. I know. I looked. That was the first thing I looked at. Like, <laughs> yo, I seen it in his hand. I was like, dude, he has them on both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, oh, I didn't know you had the double pinky. Yo, can we yeah, talk yeah. about pinky rings for a second, dude? Do you guys UGK. follow this? Thing? Yo, wait, 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 real quick. Does, well, we can get into that, yeah. but. I was going to say, do you follow the Shade Room? Do you guys follow the Shade Room nah. on Instagram? Not particularly, but I do know. You know what it what is? They, yeah. what Dude, it's some dumb shit sometimes. I only follow it for some like certain <laughs> things. But there's like, today it was like, woo-wee. Like, look at these like rapper, these famous celebrities and their family photos. And dude, the baby <laughs> has a photo yeah. with all four of his kids. Bro, I shit you not, his kids are like lined up to the side of him. And this fool is literally, if you look super close, he has his pinky resting on his like other hand and it's That's just this up. big ass pinky ring just decked <laughs> out in diamonds and he's just smiling shit. and he's holding his pinky out like I fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I did too. That's yeah. why I looked. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Whoa. Dude, one time I went, to, I took some mushrooms and went to go see Benny the Butcher. Oh, uh, and that shit. was at the House of Blues. And uh, he all of a sudden brought out West Side Gun. I and mean, he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be there. But uh, he had had his um, bracelet and that's the first time I had seen his bracelet. It's like a famous bracelet now, but it's oh, it's like a half a million bracelet. dollar bracelet. <laughs> but it's I'm like dead serious. Like back we we got like balcony seats, like sort of like nicer seats or whatever. But they're in the balcony. I wasn't like right up. But that shit's like blinding me in the eyes. Like he's just <laughs> rapping with it. It's the biggest. And he made the song later. It's yeah, that big, big ass, ass bracelet. bracelet. But <laughs> that's what it's he called. He has a song yeah, called Big Ass, ass Bracelet because that shit is legendary. But yeah man that shit people hip hop jewelry is it's literally fuck. so big it's like three big ass Cuban links it's each ridiculous. side and then like a plate but in the so middle <laughs> that dude you want to talk about jewelry cute. that dude's got I fuck I, West Side Gun is that's the only kind dude, of dude I man. love dude I fuck with West Side Gun yeah. Benny the Butcher Griselda fucking Griselda dude oh, those fire. Hey yo, yeah. like, <laughs> yo, like, dude, he has this one. He's like, something, something, but ain't nobody flyer. He's like, you looking like you're the flyest, but ain't nobody flyer. Yeah, or some like just like dude, that's hit the me with that's these. the uh, yeah, you, t- you, have, yeah. Uh, you ever cooked a half a brick on an air? Yeah, fryer? exactly. 
Yeah, everybody's talking fly now. Don't even want to fly. Yeah, yeah. Damn, there we go. Yeah. Thank you, dude. Yeah, it's just crazy. He's the dopest. But yeah, everyone over there is. I mean, that's, that's my that favorite shit. shit. So when I talk about rap, that's that's what I'm only talking. But that's lyrical rap. That's actual. I don't even know. They be talking rap. about the same shit, Honestly, with, but it's just cool. You know what I'm saying? The beats are crazy, but. Nah, but they do it with so much more finesse. Yeah, Bro, crazy. you can't fake crazy. that shit. It's like, crazy. This the style. I literally, yo, I, I love that shit. I'm yeah. big on ste. Like, you have to have ste. You have to have style of some sort. Skateboarding, fighting. Yeah. You have to be creative. You have to have yeah. some sort of swag. And when you listen to West Side Gun, Griselda, you know, Benny the Butcher fucking even Freddie Gibbs, like, bro, the way that like their delivery, the way they hold themselves, like you can call it machismo. You can call it fucking like like some people might call it misogynistic, but it's like they have this like confidence and this air about themselves that it's just like you can't fuck with me. Son. Yeah, I'm on this level of style. Like, yeah, I feel I feel like it's more so like they're just paying homage to what came before them as far as rap goes like 100 i mean if you listen to a lot of griselda beats they're sampling a lot of jazz music or you know doing a lot of s jazz and hip-hop and rapper like peanut butter and jelly like Jeez. just goes Yo. together so it's like what they're doing it in my eyes what i feel is that they're just paying homage to what came before them because they're coming so so new with it but at the same time like if you think about the beats that they're making it's like Dude, their beats are mad original. It's just though. crazy. You'll hear just but like the a, producers that they're working so with sick, though, yeah, at the same crazy. time too. But dude, like, that's what I'm saying is like the way that they're doing it is so unique and to re redefine and kind of like make something new in a in an era of mumble rap in an era of like exactly. you, people think that hip hop is so one dimensional who don't listen to hip hop, and mm -hmm. then you fucking hear West Side Gun, Griselda, Brandy the Butcher, fucking Freddie Gibbs, Currency, dude. I fuck well, with you. You know, it's funny. Is all those people you named are like almost 40 years old, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like they've been rapping for so much longer than these people. Oh, you know? dude. So but it's then like the but you experience could, is there. You know? Dude, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It, but it's that. And then you got like DJ Drama will be like, he's been around forever. But then you hear him come and talking shit on a beat. It's like, yo, yeah. yo, DJ Drama. Like, you know, shit like that. Or he was on the last album, 10. Yeah, and the, the last the last song had that Goo Goo Dolls feature, which was crazy. <laughs> dude, wow. Hitler wears Hermes. It was weird, or yeah, yeah. It was the ten, dude. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say right now I might have the best Griselda collection in San Diego. Uh, yeah, I was I was gonna say. Derek. I'm just gonna say that right now. On on vinyl. On vinyl. Derek, I think I might Derek's have. I think I have my, one of the best, if not the best. He's pretty. I'll compete with anybody. In, tied up with the Griselda. I'm, dude, I'm not I'm gonna deny boy. this. I'm not gonna even deny this. But you so. know what's cool? Is I, I I'll do bootleg. I'll do bootlegs too. I don't give a fuck because I'll play them. So. Dude, I remember. Oh my god! Can I tell you a story real quick about Derek? <laughs> well, again, this is like one of the first times I met Derek. Dude, he was playing some shit during the grand opening, and I legit was like, "Yo," I was holding my phone, and I was like, "Yo, what is this?" And he didn't even hear me. But then all of a sudden, he saw what I was doing, and he just looked at me. He's like, "Yo, G," I looked up. He's like, "You're not gonna find that." And I was like, it's on this record <laughs> with this, and they don't even have it anywhere. And I Do was like, what it was? I, I don't, don't remember. <laughs> and I was like, for real? And you're like, yeah, G. I got like one of it's only on vinyl. And you were like, dude. it was That's one of the up. sickest beats. And he, you were, dude, you were like the way you did it too, because you were wearing that brown San Diego jersey. You were, <laughs> and like, bro, yeah, I remember. I, grand, yeah. It was like, and then you were behind this with the everything, yeah, dude. It was so live. I was like, fuck It'd yeah, be like that. Thank it you. Really do be like that, dude. <clears throat> that I, I mean, I might be able to tell you what it is. I don't remember. I wish I could tell you, but if you remember, dude. <laughs> dude, I definitely am not gonna remember, because after that we got like super drunk. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you ever hear it again, let me know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, one thing I want to get into too. As of late, I mean, you guys have just been playing in the park, but then, you know, it shut down because, you know, the, the winter months and you guys shifted to now that there's a couple bars here in town. Do you need another drink? Oh, boom. Uh, there's a glass right over there on the, on the thing. Oh, the fat little one. Yeah, the little baby one. Um, and there's also, if you want, in the fridge, there's a Vino Verde we can pop too. 
uh, in the fridge in the in the bar area. Yeah, just get that one too. Yeah, fuck it, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's been hype about it. Let's, let's dude, I've been out. telling you this white is so good. I'm excited to try it. It's a vino verde. It's really really nice. I'm down. Um, but okay, so sorry, I got. We're <laughs> good. Track. You guys have yeah. shifted. Yes, see, see, see. Um, you guys have shifted now to doing a lot of the popular bars here in North Park. It's just a twist off too. Easy. Uh, Part time lover hi fi. You guys are there a lot. Yeah. You guys have been doing other events. Like people have hired you. I mean, has this all come from the park? Like people going. People knew who you were. Or what have you guys been doing? Do you guys promote? Um. No. We don't. <laughs> uh, it's mainly word of mouth. Honestly, as far as as far as how people figure it out, I have. Um, it's funny actually with the part time lover thing. I remember the first time. Uh, so I don't know how other people got on, but I just would e- I just emailed them and it was like, yo, I like what you do. Like, <laughs> is there any way I can get me and my friends over? And they were just like, yeah, we, f- we fuck with you too. Like, yeah, we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? And then, um, Brendan, shout out Brendan. Yeah, he, uh, out, he started coming around to the park. And we see what is we're this doing. like the buyer or like? I think he's the owner of Folk Art Records. Folk Arts, yeah. Um, and then yeah, because wait, was Folk Arts here? Yeah. Folk Arts uh, uh, is the uh, Folk, Folk Arts is the uh, record shop in Part Time Lover. But it's it was its own record store by itself. So Brandon On said that University, it was. I think. It was, oh, okay. It was. It used to be called Juniper Records before, and then it became Folk Arts. But it's like. Yeah, it's just because it's just this was a record store before. I just didn't know the name. Oh no, you know it was funny. I remember coming here before you came here, and it was like it was like this sneakers. Was like, this was like yeah, sneakers. Juby Drip. Yeah, that's what it used to be. Yeah. Ah, this those was, sneakers too. Those this are was a, like Stray Rats Records or some shit. I remember because I applied to work here in high school. Really? <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, oh. I wanted to work at a record store so bad in high school. It was either a record store or a fucking coffee shop. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get into yeah I didn't I didn't get into either of those so I fucking worked at San Diego State at the Chipotle there instead. Oh shit! But yeah, it was it was called like it was called like Stray Rat Records or something with the Rat Record Shop. I remember. I think it was Rat Records. Rat Records. That now that I say that, damn, that's. It was, it was something like I've that. heard a lot of stories about uh, a lot of people will come in here and tell me their stories about that. This coming to the record shop. Coming to here, well, just in general, just coming into here, like people will like literally stay here and just tell me stories, and it's fucking dope. Yeah, yeah. Long history, I'll go home. Dude, for real, for yeah. real. Dude, JFK drove down here. What? <laughs> you know that? What are you talking about? JFK took a to, he drove down here. Dude, the first back time. in back in when he was president. Dude, he just drove down El Cajon yeah, Boulevard. Yeah, he, cru- he cruised down. Yeah. Like people just waving. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I'm pretty sure. I'm like I'm like 99 percent positive. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I. And then there's know. the famous hotel. There's the Lafayette. Yeah, yeah. Dude, El Cajon's also, pretty pretty legendary. But just San Diego in general. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But El Cajon though is yeah. I mean, one of the that and University are like the longest. Yeah, these streets. are the main veins for sure. Yeah, they're the longest streets. In San That's San why Diego. you got the boulevard. That's true. The thing yeah. at the end, the other sign. Yeah, yeah, you are you're on a legendary street, man. Dude, that's why one of my coffees is called El Cajon Boulevard. It's named after go. like the way Nipsey did Crenshaw. I did oh, the yeah. El Cajon Boulevard. Sick. We, instead of like Nipsey with the outline, we did the shop. And it's like all like cut out, and it, it, we did it just like the label art though. So it's like red and then white, and it says El Cajon Boulevard. It's in a Crenshaw. Nice. I'm gonna uh, try that one. Sorry, by the way, like we were we <laughs> cut off the story, <laughs> but you were at Part Time Lover, so so you were hitting them up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, so I think what what was funny about this was that I asked them, I'm like, yeah, can we come in? And they ended up saying like, yeah, you know, they they saw what we did. And then they got back to us and we're like, yeah, we, you know, that's cool. And then they gave me the green light to bring like a bunch of people, you know what I mean? But, uh, when they ask you to come, they ask you to like, give like a blurb, like a few words about like who you are, something, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, play, like, yeah, exactly. it was whatever. Like, you know, if but, you don't know who the fuck we are, you're lame. <laughs> <It> <laughs> yeah. was, but it was like, I don't know. It was just like a, like a vibe setter. Cause it, cause they come out with the calendar and then it'll, okay. it'll say you. And then like the little, like few word blurb. But like, I, the, what's funny is <laughs> my first reaction and he denied it, uh, was I asked to be here. 
that was <laughs> <laughs> i thought it would be cool but yeah so it was like, so things like that is like i've reached out and like have have been like hey can can we do something and then other places will reach out to us because they have heard about it or have come and seen it and stuff like that i mean like we i uh i think the way we got to you was through um san diego coffee network so dude like, yeah people yeah. will people will like what we do and sort of Tell other people. I mean, it's a small community here is what I figured out, especially like through vinyl people. I mean, mm-hmm. vinyl people will hear about it real quick and then wine people will hear about it. And then um, and then from there, it's like, I think it's just a lot of just people, like-minded people, people who like that shit will just hear about it. So in turn, a lot of people are doing things here. It's San Diego's a big city. So uh, people talk, you know what I mean? And your network continues to grow because of how many people will like show up. Yeah, and yeah. then who knows what they're doing and they're you know yeah. everyday lives, but the, they'll start talking about what you're doing and the word spreads and then you get opportunities. Yeah, I yeah. will say like in the beginning, um, you would have seen me uh, like telling everybody about it. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have whoever I worked at a dispensary not too long ago, and it would be like whoever walked in, it, mainly pretty girls, but whoever walked in. <laughs> I would just be like, hey, like, this is what I do. And it would be like, oh, that sounds cool. And I would just be like, Go, you know, here's the Instagram. I had never. Here's the Instagram. Yeah, I had never <laughs> had. So take, my, take my IG, yeah. son. You're, you're going to want to know. Yeah, right. So I would never had social media in my life until Wino Club happened. So I was really shameless with the fact of like, well, yeah, it's not me. Like, here, just follow this. It's like a thing. Follow the thing, right? <laughs> thing. And then. uh so I would I would tell everybody anyone I'd ring up essentially like and I was ringing up with a lot of people a day you know what I'm saying <laughs> so like I would tell everybody and then after a while I've noticed I stopped telling people and it the numbers still kept going Dude, so it's yeah. like people do a lot of the heavy lifting for me now like it's just it just gets yeah. out but I will say and since the down since we've stopped it's like a t- t- oh, it immediately just dead it would go from like. Then I couldn't tell you how many followers we would get a week to now nobody like I'm losing shit but it's like that's fine it's the off season I get it you know what I'm saying yeah but the amount of like word to mouth it just showed the amount of word to mouth that was going on like it's crazy was ridiculous dude I told I remember one one week we went I told some uh, what the fuck is the word I'm like a tourist Jesus Christ could not think of that like I was gonna say guests but I had I had some people come in, and they were like, I don't know. From one week it was like Sweden, and then another week it was like people from like the Midwest, and they fucking came, and it was like, they're like, hey guys, like, what are you guys doing? You know, like, what do you, what do you guys do around here for fun? I was like, well, it's actually it's Wednesday. I was like, if you want to do something super fun, it's free. <laughs> Maybe go get a bottle of wine. I was like, they because I gave them directions to the fucking March and Ash because they were like, hey, it's weeds legal here. Can we right. get weed and whatever? So that conversation you know goes on. But I was like, hey, if you guys want to go, go to you should go here. Here's exactly where it is. Boom, you'll find it. Dude, later that day, I was sitting there and like again smoking. Chilling, drinking some wine with the homies. I look over and I saw they were there. The tourists. Oh no! They way. pulled up, and I was like, That's "Yo, crazy. what the fuck?" I just started waving. I was like, "Hey, what's up, guys? You made it!" They're like, "We did. Thank you so much. This is so fun." You yeah. know, that was like <laughs> tight. But I would definitely, dude, all the time. I no shame. I'm like, yeah. boom. Thank you, dude. I remember I even tagged one time. I was like, "This is literally my favorite thing to do," and it was just like took a picture of you guys, like way off in the distance, but it was just open grass. It reminds me a lot of Dolores Park in San Francisco. Dope. Yeah. I but like that. that. But that's like way more extreme up there. Like you For can sure. like straight up like buy acid from somebody like walking around. I've had, yeah, anything. I've had experiences like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I imagine, but <laughs> it, it's definitely more uh, prevalent, I think there, but maybe. Like, oh, no, I'm saying there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, yeah. There? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ash, I've bought an acid off the street and shit like that. Yeah. That's, that's a great time. Dude, I was in Golden Gate Park one time. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I was in Golden Whoops. Gate Park one time and there was like, uh, we were playing Frisbee golf and this fucking dude literally walks out of the bush and he's like, Paps Little Ribbons for a, bi- uh, for a dollar and I have cookies from the club for $3 a piece. Right. <laughs> I just looked at him and I was like, cool. I will take six beers and we'll grab two of those edibles. Right. And he yeah. just handed them to me and he's like, all right, later guys. And he was just walking around with a 12 pack selling them for a dollar a beer. Sick. <laughs> Like, bro, if you really think about it, it's like small Paps, business. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's $8 maybe and $7. And he fucking yeah. making a dollar a beer. There's 12 beers. Like, bro, you just, 
They could have stole it too, you know. What I'm then maybe he even stole it. There yeah. you go, twelve small bucks, business. baby. He used to support small business. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what's funny is that because um, you said frisbee golf, I um, I am born and raised here, so in high school, someone figured out in my friend group that going and playing frisbee golf was like a free ticket to go drink and smoke weed without anyone bothering you. But the more yeah, the Morley Field frisbee golf is like fucking you watch them play when we're out in the park like it's yeah. that close so like it's funny to see like because i was out there all the time i have my own discs and shit like that like it got oh. yeah you know what i mean so it like, got we, serious but yeah because it's super fun like i don't know if you ever played but i have not it's like so well i mean i played that time i was in san francisco but i, can't, I don't even remember dude it's i needed to do it again i haven't played in years but it we were going all the time cause, and like smoking and hanging i didn't drink much but i would smoke you know what i'm saying like and it's it's just crazy to see like now I'm back there fucking what like ten years later you know what I mean like doing something completely different but it's in the same spot like that I never thought I'd be doing like I never even conceived that this is what I was gonna be doing you know so it's 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 a trip because awesome. yeah I'd be walking around throwing discs around and shit like that and uh yeah now i see those dudes hanging out and i want to do it i want to sometimes i want to like <laughs> you're like damn yeah. i don't want to be spinning this music yeah right for now. sure sometimes i thought about bringing my disc and just hitting that one hole like over and over again dude that one know? that's Do right behind yeah, yeah. yeah. Close. it's yeah, a sick it hole too but the, you know what this dope is the hole right before it is like really sick sometimes you gotta like throw it through the trees and shit like i don't that. know i remember one time i was like walking to the bathroom yo if anyone takes gross like, ass bathroom the, the one up in the corner? He, well, we can't they go. Cross the street. We can't go to the one that's like directly. I've seen some weird the, shit go down to the park the away from us. For real. We have. I have to go to the one that's like full on the whole other side of Morley. Okay. So like we're fucking walking over there, and yeah, it's just like people get so serious, and there's not even any like there's there's like nothing for them to like go shoot their or like get their their frisbee in like these guys are just throwing it to the fence like going so crazy throwing their frisbees to the fence you can get like, that thing go pretty far yeah no i was so surprised one time i when i was walking by i saw this guy like just practicing whatever he was going dumb i'm not going to talk about it too much but what's crazy about it is that <laughs> each each disc is like different like different so like they'll have numbers on them and each number signifies mm -hmm. like okay look you have this number going first, so that means it's gonna like, it's just crazy. Like you know, like if it has a certain number sequence, you know that your disc is gonna fly more to the right or some shit. Like it's yeah. more weighted on one part and it'll fly more to the left or something like that. Like mm. different discs are like those guys are crazy. I really fuck with frisbee golf. Well, this is, so, dude, somebody came in here recently sick. was talking Shout to me. They, they said, you know what you have to get into is frisbee golf. You should. My friend, I wasn't even a friend. It was uh, just a customer, and they said. You should start to look into sponsoring frisbee people because dope, frisbee man. golf is like taking off. I was like, okay, taking uh, off. I wouldn't say it's taking <laughs> off. That's what I was like. I don't know, but yeah. okay, I don't. They they do some pretty dope shit. Like I would watch, I would watch like tournaments on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like professional professional frisbee golfers. They're dope. Like they get down and they got some cool courses. A lot of the courses are like overseas that are crazy, like over yeah. over lakes and bodies of water and shit like that. It's dope, but. <laughs> Morley Field's the premier frisbee golf in San Diego, and then it's also the location for Wild Club now. Okay, so Morley Field, you were going there. You were just going with your homies on your days off. What point were you like, hey, let's promote this. Let's tell some people that we're going to spin some music. We're going to drink some wine. We're going to open this to the public. That's a good question. I don't, um, I don't know. Like I said, it was just like us hanging out at first. Uh and like I said, I worked at a dispensary. So before I would tell random people, I would tell my coworkers. So I'd be like, hey, look, this is what we do. <laughs> like, if you're ever off or if you like, you know, after work, if you're free, come through. And a lot of them would be like, yeah, <laughs> sounds cool, but whatever, right? And then like, so, but some people would come, Nisa, Veronica, Chris. All the homies would come, um, and they they know that they were, they were showing up with like ten people. I mean, like it grew from like four of us to like all right now there's like six seven now there's ten maybe fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Like 
And technically, like, we had had a first season of Wino before anyone else got hip to it last this last year. So, like, we had had a whole, like, um, winter break and shut down before. And March was, like, technically the second season. But uh, the, so once once it was, like, I think it was, well, it was actually the the – year anniversary we just had when we ended yeah was um the year anniversary of when that the instagram started so i would say probably that point is when it became a thing of like oh well let's tell other people you know what i mean because uh a, a lot of the time after so i don't know if you knew this but panama 66 has a jazz night on wednesday i ha i do know about it yes. yeah so we would go it would work out. It would work out to the point of like, we would go to Winel, and again, it'd be like maybe 10 people on a good day. And we go to Winel and get fucked up and listen to music for fucking hours. And then I would go either by myself or like, I'd get everyone else to go to uh, Panama 66 immediately after because Morley Fields are right there. It's right next to Bobo Park. So we'd go to Panama 66 and uh, shout out to Jojo. She would give me more wine on the house, <laughs> which was sick. And then uh, I would just listen to jazz music for like a couple more hours, a few more hours or whatever. But with that, with the like wine or club, like I just got done listening to a bunch of West Side Gun for like three hours and I'm all hype and like going into <laughs> listening to jazz music like with like energy, like rap. And I was like, fuck, you know, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was sick. But uh, and shout out to uh, Gilbert Castellanos. That dude's is fucking sick. All those guys are fucking tight. Like, the bassist is crazy. Tyler on the drums, he's dope. Yeah, there's a, a lot of a lot of dope ass people. Um, but we would go there, and um, like I said, JoJo, I think it was really her idea to be like, let's make an Instagram. Like, like I said, I didn't have any social media. Mm. I just never went into, like into it. Like, I was stuck in my own bubble of whatever i was doing and whatever i thought was cool but uh when jojo was like let's do it she she took my phone and got the app and pretty much made the account and once the account was made that's when it was like well let's see how it goes you know let's try and tell people and see what happens that's when we jumped to me just telling everybody i was didn't give a fuck like i'll tell you i'll tell anybody blah 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 and then it started steady growing. And then it jumped from, like, I don't know how many people we got in between. But I remember being shocked, like, the first one back. Like, from when we ended it, because we we'd made the Instagram, like, last Wednesday of October. Uh, not 2020? 2021. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah, twenty 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 three. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so we had made it in twenty twenty one in October, last Wednesday of October twenty twenty one. Uh, I don't remember how we had kept doing it, like how we stopped this year. We had kept going on for a few more weeks. I remember, and then we stopped. The Instagram kept growing. I just don't remember how like predominantly grew, but then we were back in March, like how we're gonna do this year. We we're gonna be back in March. I can't wait. Yeah, so we were back in March and. We had done this thing where we had given free pizza to whoever, like whoever came. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, there'll just be someone making pizza and whoever wants it. Like multiple flavors, you know what I'm saying? Like he, there was a menu. Like you can go and be like, I want this pizza. And he'd be like, cool, go ahead and sit down. He'd bring it to you. Yep. Free. All free. So we had did that. And I remember being shocked on like, oh, there's like more people. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's people I don't even know here. Like, and then from there, it just would keep growing of mm -hmm. like, oh, there's definitely people I have no clue who they are here. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, so yeah, I went from like five people who I do know to maybe we might get like a hundred people. I don't know a lot of them. I feel like there's been over a hundred people. Dude, I sure. definitely feel like I've been there and there's been over a hundred people. For it's sure. hard. Yeah, it's hard to guess. Especially, guesstimate. um, a hundred sounds cool. Especially, uh, Christopher's I forget the question. birthday. 
Yeah, Chris's birthday was cool. What Chris, hold? Chris, anytime, shout out to Chris. We got to really, I wish Chris was here. I wish he had to talk, but we got to really talk about Chris because Chris is like, yeah. I think Chris brings a crazy element to Lionel. Um, we, <laughs> he's like, so he was doing his thing before, uh, before Wino was a thing. He had Cowbell been, Chris. yeah, he had been getting gigs and some, and my as was a, was a predominant DJ in San Diego. He had, a. Uh, like I said, I didn't know what was going on before. It. <laughs> I, know, I had no clue what was happening. I didn't know. So I didn't know anybody. And Chris was like, I would be walking around with Chris and he'd be like, you know who that person is? This is, this is like a good San Diego DJ. Like we, you should, you should know who this person is type thing. And I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. You know. And what's Chris's last name? Like who, Walker, Chris Walker, yeah, Chris, Chris Walker. Walker. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chris Skywalker or Cowbell Chris, whoever a you want. A lot wanna, of people know him by Chris. Skywalker, yeah. Whoever you want to call him. But okay. he, um, he is one of the only DJs that doesn't do vinyl at vinyl club. Mm-hmm. But like I said, was a predominant DJ before vinyl club was even a thing. So I attribute a lot of, um, success and the uh, gain in followers and just people coming out into the park uh, to Chris. Cause he, he like was cool enough to shout it out and come out every week, you know, and do some shit, even though homie gets paid, you know what I'm saying? Homie gets paid to DJ. I don't, I'm not able to pay any of these people that come out to the park, but they just do it out of respect, which is cool. Well, but, dude, it's a vibe. It's like yeah. you, you guys are doing more for people than you even realize. So, you know, I hope it goes both ways. I hope I can like repay them in some other way. But yeah, Chris has been a big factor of like growing it yeah. and getting it out and like telling other people about it. I think he reaches a different demographic as far as like, you know, he's not doing vinyl. He plays different kind of music. He's like super versatile. So it's a big shout out to him. But yeah, he's like, so all the, all the people involved are like, they have their own way of putting in different kind of work. You know what I mean? Well, it's a collective, dude. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Exactly. So, big shout out to Chris. I wish he was here. Damn. Yeah. That's super dope. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, and you said you didn't remember how what the question was, but that, that the question was yeah, like... Yeah, now the wine is kicked in. Yeah, well, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The question was, I don't worry, I knew I knew where we were going. There we go. And you answered all, all of what I had a- okay. asked. It was just kind of like where you guys are, how it started, how it really went from, you know, you in the park to now you're going to be kicking it with a bunch of people in yeah, I don't know how setting really. such a vibe. Dude, I have photos. I don't remember who I was talking to today. Fuck, I wish I could remember, dude. But I was, or maybe it was even yesterday, but I was showing a photo that I took of pretty much all of my best friends <clears throat> on one random Wino Club Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And it was seriously, I think it was like seven of us, yeah, seven or eight of us. And I'm taking like, you know, like a zoomed out 0.5 photo, like trying to get everybody. And there's like people smoking, people drinking, people just hanging out, talking, having a good time. The dog is there, you know, dude. when there was, when kids showed up, that's when I was like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, dude, there's hella babies there. (laughs) Yeah. That's That's when I was like, oh, this is, uh, this is more out of my hands than I thought. Dude, I saw a fucking like a, like a fake baby pen. No, 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 no. I saw like a fake baby pen. Like they, <laughs> like crazy. there were some parents and they brought their kid and their kid was like sitting in this little, like gated off little area. Yeah. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what they call that. Like, crazy. uh, with yeah, the yeah, walls yeah. and yeah. shit. Yeah. It's a baby pen. Yeah. And the kids were just chilling, like whatever. And wow. the parents are just drinking and having a good time hanging out in the park and they don't give a fuck. Nobody's it's like crazy. smoking weed. And shit. Yo, speaking of crazy. Chris, uh, shout out to his sister. Cause his sister, I remember. She brought her. I'm not her even kidding. One time. I'm not even kidding. I, she came to the park one week pregnant. Came to the park like the next week or the following week after, like not pregnant anymore. <laughs> with that just kid. brought the baby. Like yeah, yo, for yeah. sure. She was here and now she's yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I was like, I had told her, I'm like, yo, this is you know, this is like the baby's like first musical event. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah. that's crazy. You know Lionel what I'm Club baby. Yeah, yeah. But also too. The show. I feel like we should uh, give a little. Thank you to uh, Bincho, because oh, a lot yeah. of people well, pull everyone, up, pull Bincho. up Bincho Taco. They're the ones who would do the tacos sometimes oh, on Wednesdays. Dude, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people would. They're pull in up the club. Too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, a lot they of people would pull up because they they would know that like oh Bincho is gonna be there. 
Dude, they were the ones that would like post up by the wall. Yeah, the they did. There. They do like <clears throat> Japanese coal-fired Korean barbecue style tacos. Wait, Japanese Korean? They're style? Japanese. It's Japanese coals, and they're Korean yeah. barbecue style tacos. Ooh. Yeah, so it's you a can crazy get, combo. But yeah. It's definitely a crazy combo. Yeah, they're, dope. they're fantastic. Yeah, Dude. shout out to Bingo. I mean, like, who is the wine dealer? Eskina. Eskina. Shout out to Eskina. Like, we had a lot of people come, like, and Goldie. You know, like, Danielle yeah, is Goldie. fucking amazing. So, like, Goldie, Goldie, Goldie. And then, like, people, like, homemade. Like, I'm wearing their shirt right now. The homies. Like, shout out Bogey and Josh. But, but, like I said, all these people are in the club. Dude, fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they've all attributed, like, contributed to uh, just the overall thing. Like, the Wino Club as a whole. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, a big shout. They've all brought their own um, followings, respectively. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it just keeps adding to what we were doing. And I think it's dope. Yeah, so shout out to all of them, for real. Because yeah, they kill it. And the tacos are fire. Records are crazy. I've bought some dope shit off Daniel. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm wearing the homemade stuff, so yeah. sick. I need to drink more coffee. Shout out to San Diego Coffee Network. Dude, dude. Shout out to Caffeine and Green. But yeah. Dude. Yo, I mean, you guys did it at Por Vida as well. Yeah. Yo, I mean, dude, I just want to, I want to, if, if it's okay, I want to share something that like you guys helped afford it along with the San Diego Coffee Network. Yo, like, first of all, first, sh- first and foremost, I remember seeing you guys before the first break. Crazy. Uh, because of Siri Simran. Yeah. Siri Simran was going to Wino Club, like a, original Wino Club yeah. from what you're talking about. And no, she was no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. The original one was like literally just or not like, the original, but like you said, you did the first break and then it was after the first break. Right? Yeah, she was coming. Yeah, they were. I don't know how. It was through Por Vida. You know what happened? Here's what happened. It was a uh, Por Vida was just so sick in the beginning. Like <laughs> I don't know if I should. I had like um, met the daughter. You know what I'm saying, Marina. Mariana? Marina. Marina. Sorry, Marina. Oh, Marina. Uh, I had met her through JoJo, and that was um, Go JoJo. that was on some funny shit. How I met her, but I had like <laughs> I had like told, I was drunk. Like I said, I would I would go there fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like I would go to jazz night like fucking on a level, and then like Lit. go watch jazz. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like, I had met Marina there, and like had exchanged some sort of um, there was a transaction that had happened. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. I, I had just like drunkenly just be like, oh, like I just fucking got done doing this, blah, 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 blah. Like, this is what I do. And then she's like, damn, that's sick. Like, my dad owns a coffee shop. Like, he's always looking for people. I had no clue. Like I said, I don't know anything. You know what I'm saying? Before, why don't I had no clue? Nothing in San Diego, nothing about any shit. Uh, nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're literally talking to the daughter of like one of the like most OG dudes in the bar. Yeah. yeah I had no For clue. Real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, I was just stuck on like, I just watched a lot of movies and I was just stuck in my bubble. You know what I'm saying? So like I had, so Living I had under a rock, my G that yeah, better for, way to explain it for yo. a fact, for a fact. So I had met Marina and I was just like, yeah, this is what I do. And she's like, yeah, that's sick. You know? And then like all random, like two, two months, two and a half months later, I get a text from her. Like, um, Hey, yo, like, blah, like some, some at the coffee shop. Like, do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. But they had just opened up, like, the, the one collab. Town? Oh, no, the, the one the Imperial. Collab. Yeah, they had okay, just, it yeah. wasn't even really open yet. So, like, I remember going down. She's like, go, go uh, meet my dad and talk to him. So, I remember going down and, like, just on my off day at work and meeting, uh, Milo. Milo. Meeting Milo. Yeah, exactly. And, like, and just, like, t- hanging out and, like, Dude, he's talking. Oh, gee. Dude, he's the nicest guy. So, like, and, like, hadn't even, like, really heard about it. Like, I mean, Marina told him, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't even know if Marina had seen it at this point. But, like, they were just, they were just down, dude. They were just, like, we, we fuck with what your idea is and shit like that. Like, we, I, like, fuck it, you know? And they, they let us rock, like, so many times. Like, like, they would, like, have an event or something. And then, like, they'd be like, yo, you want to do it? And, like. It would just be like, yeah, man, because it was the first time like people were asking us to do anything. Like yeah. to me, I had had no, I had no concept of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't DJing more than like six months, maybe. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you how long. And then like people were asking me to go do shit now, and I'm like, oh, sure. Because you, know? you can't deny that. You realize that, right? Like, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but it's like, bro, your vibe, 
the vibe that you put on at Wano Club is like it's undeniable. Well, that's what I'm saying though. Is like is like he they didn't even see that. What they do you mean didn't, they didn't see that? They didn't even come like they hadn't even seen it yet. But they were Marina, just like Marina has seen it though. Yeah. Nah, nah. Nah. It's it was literally like I and I go back to my theory of like, dude, you could be a shitty DJ, but like as long as you're a genuine person. But you, you know exude. But like, I mean, if anybody's met you, bro, like you're like you exude this like. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't, je ne sais quoi. You, you have, you exude some <laughs> yeah. shit that is like, you look at you and you're like, yeah, that dude just knows what's up. Like, so you don't even I guess need to that's know. what you saw. Cause see, I, so, cause I, when I met Milo, it was literally, I was just explaining to him like, Hey, this is what I do. Like, this is sort of the idea, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I fuck with that. Like, come, come hang out. You know what I mean? And it, ever since then, it'd be like, yeah, come, come do this, come do that. And then, uh, that's how it happened because the the San Diego Coffee Network had like a one of their contests here, or there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the like co- latte, the latte art throat. Yeah. So that that was in March. That was. Um, I mean, in February. It was in February because I dude, don't remember. I came back from I came back from Tahiti the day before that one, and the next day I came back. You were at Port Vida at that. Thing? I went to Port Vida. Yeah. I so came, that was straight us. to that. Per- we were, yeah. We were there spinning records. So then, uh, yeah, that's how they caught wind of us was through that. Cause we were just like playing records for their event. at Port Dude. Vida. So holy shit. So Port Vida opened up a lot of shit for me. Like, cause it's just, I can't even think of enough. And then we did like Milo. It was just like, so sick. We've done like Milo's birthday. Like we just did like the, the obviously we did the year anniversary there. Like, Dude. Yeah. They're just so sick. Like, Dude, Porvita is by far Milo and everybody, Caro and fucking Marina. The whole family is Dude, ridiculous. Like, Manny, yeah. all those, everybody, the, the, the art director, I forgot his name, I only met him a couple times. Dude, he's the, yeah, he's the homie. Yeah, I forget his name too, but he's, he's sick. Dude, the fact that Milo wasn't tripping that Siri and Sophie served my coffee at Por Vida. Oh, that's rad. During Wino Club. Fuck yeah. Dude, I legit, I fucking, I de- like me and Milo talked. Like, dude, I didn't even think about that. That's crazy. Dude, I was tripping balls, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. I was like, that. "Are you sure you want to?" They're like, "Yeah." They said it was fine. <clears throat> dude, I I told. I think his name is Johnny. Damn, is it I didn't Johnny? Even think about that. That's crazy. Is it Johnny, the dude with the tatted head? Johnny, I think dude, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, I told Johnny. I was like, "Yo, I just want you to know, bro. You guys like fully inspired me." And I was like, "I think I told Milo when he was on the show because, so dude, sick. Milo was like, I think you had Milo on here, dude. I had Milo." Caro and Avril sick from when she was the manager there. So this yeah. is like two, maybe two fucking like three, four years ago. Yeah. Like when the podcast first started. Dope. So there was like, they were episode like 24, or 25. We're on 170. This will be two. 172. That's yeah. Sick. So it's like, <laughs> damn, that's crazy. That's a lot. I, I told Milo, I said, Hey bro. Like, I mean, I've heard every episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like messaged Milo and I was like, I just want to thank you so much. He's like, so sick. Yeah. Y- you guys inspired everything. And I told Johnny that I was like, you guys inspired all of this yeah. because as soon as I walked into their space in Barrio, I fucking realized that coffee right is not Box records. Dude. Yeah. I realized yeah. coffee was not one dimensional. It was whatever the fuck you wanted to make it. And Milo yeah. was straight up the OG. Like, and I met Milo and he had poor Vita and I saw he has poor Vita tatted like right on the it's side of so his face. It, yeah. It's just like, bro, like you, yeah, bro. You don't, you do not have to be some <laughs> cookie cutter shit for coffee. No, yeah. you can do whatever you want. As long as you're like setting He's the vibe yeah. and just doing the damn thing. It's like, He's killing it. Yo, mad respect forever to poor Vita and to Milo and everybody in that family. Like one hundred. Like, yeah, I don't know if they know how much they helped us out. Like in the beginning, mm-hmm. it was crazy. And then honestly, on that tip, too, is like, I got to give a big shout out to Tony at Good Faith. Like, yeah, I had um, met Tony at Good Faith and that changed a lot of things, too. So that was like after poor Vita, like poor Vita had given us a lot of opportunity and a lot of exposure and just like allowing us to like spin in front of people because i mean who, uh, like i had started with someone else and I, don't, I forget you know what i mean they're not with us anymore but i forget if they had had like actual experience spinning in front of like people you know what i'm saying they probably did but whatever you know what i mean i hadn't so that was only new experience for me like spinning in front of people i don't know like 
I'm not good. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't like. Stop it! Don't even say that. Don't even say that bullshit. It's, not even that. it's like I don't, I don't <laughs> like. Don't I don't like being in the spotlight. Like I don't like being cameras pointed at me. I don't like people looking at me. Like, let alone like trying to express myself over through some fucking records. You know what I'm saying? But so, like, you are though, and you're killing it. So how well, are you, you saying this? But, so, <laughs> so, but it just it just uh, it gave me a lot of practice. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like doing it in front of people. So I it's cool. But then um, I had met Tony. Like it's so funny. I um. My friend, it was her birthday, and she's like, hey, come over um, and hang out for my birthday. I'm having some friends over at my house. And I go to her apartment, which is, you know what's really funny? She lives right next to Brandon Turner. It's crazy. Really? I've seen that dude come out of his house, and I'm like, dude, a fucking legendary. Dude. So, <laughs> Do you know who you live yeah, next to? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, I, so Escape um, up, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, big shout out. everything. But, um, but I had uh, hung out at our house, and I'm, like, slowly realizing that it's just, like, it's like a girl's night. But I'm like, but I'm in the, I'm in the apartment too. So I feel like awkward, you know what I mean? And I'm like, ah, uh, you know, they're all, they were having a good time. We're smoking and having like a couple glasses of champagne or whatever. And they're like, okay, we're going to go to like a bar or something like that. And then we're going to go to like an art show. And I'm like, like, this is over again. I don't, I don't go out. Like I don't really do this. So I'm like, ah, uh, you know, I don't really want to do this type thing. And my friend was like, nah, just come through. Like, it's going to be fine. So I, we go and we go to the art show and the art show is, um, do you know who Dewey Sanders is? No. He's cool, I guess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He does collages. He's I right. the the he had a lot of he had a lot of dope shit actually. But um he did the um you ever you know Anderson Pack, yeah. uh, the Malibu album? Yes. He did the cover to that. Oh. And he also did the cover to Venice, the one before that. Damn. Like collage style. So like <clears throat> yeah, he's he's a pretty uh, he's a pretty big artist. But I had no clue who he was, right? So I was I had no I had I'm no I'm not surprised. Yeah, so I had had the album Malibu, uh, but I didn't know who he was by name. So we go to his show and uh another funny thing, I'm like looking at the art and this guy comes up to me, he's like, Hey man, how's it going? And I'm like, Who the fuck is this guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> so and he's like, hey, How's it going? I'm like, Good, man, how are you? And he's like, You know, thank you for coming and I'm like who the fuck says that? You know what I'm saying? So I'm this like, must be the guy. I'm like, are you, is this your shit? And he's like, yeah. So I'm like, ah. so I ended up talking to the motherfucker. He's a nice dude, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but so whatever. So we're at, but that's at good faith. Okay. That's at good faith. And, um, one of Chris's homies, Benji, uh, <laughs> I think had come, I had come to vinyl club and seen it or something like that once or twice. And he was like helping out a good faith. And, and, I, so again, like I'm at like this girls' night birthday night. I don't know anybody. That dude Abjo is DJing there. He's a mm. Predominant San Diego DJ. I never met him before either. Um, but Benji's the only one that recognizes me. <laughs> I'm like in this place <laughs> alone. Like I don't want to be there. And Benji goes like, "Yo, what's up?" And I'm like, "Oh shit, I know you. Like, what's what's happening?" So oh, shit, I know you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, he's like, "Yo, like, I know Tony. I I sort of work here, blah blah blah. You should link up with Tony. Like, he's a good dude." And then um, from there, I had met that dude Tony, great dude. He offered us to do like a like a can drive or something. Like it was some sort of like drop off goods for I don't know. You know, I'm bad with that shit, but whatever. I did something for him. <laughs> And it was cool. He liked what we did. Um, and then from there, he would give us opportunities to go to his night markets because he does night markets at the courtyard. And those are sick. He's got a lot of vendors, clothing, whatever, a lot of random stuff. But he would do that, and that would be, like, our first paid gigs. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that would be the first time we were putting money in our pockets through this shit. And that was a good opportunity because, again, I'm playing in front of people. Like, I'm not used to that. And it was just a crazy opportunity. So Tony plays a big part in the growth of Wano Club too, because he got us out to a different crowd, a lot of like hip people. You know what I'm saying? Like that led us to, to a relationship with Rottweiler, David. You know what I'm saying? Which is a, a sick company. Um, that just let it just led to a lot of different shit, meeting a lot of different people, a lot of people seeing us. You know what I'm saying? A lot of like artistic people seeing us, and thinking it's cool and shit like that. I mean, it is. You're stylish. Yeah. <laughs> You're super stylish. Like try. 100. Like, yo, I remember the first time I saw you with your grill. Like, well, you had to, you were like, yo, I just got my grill. But I was like, yo, so that's why the shop, like, a lot of my graphics have my gold grill. So I have top and bottom grills. Sick. But, like, they go across. Full I want fronts. Full fronts, yeah. full bottoms. 
and that's a big part of what I feel the brand here has been. So when I've seen you like just, you know, through talking to you and like saying hello, as soon as we like pull up or whatever, I was like, yo, when I seen your grill, I was like, yo, yeah, yeah. yo, that's dope. You're like, yo, I just got them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted them, you know, and dude, uh, I love yeah. it. I like, I, I like jewelry. I mean, we're talking about jewelry. Yeah, tub. yeah. Yo, my mom tripped on them. It was pretty funny. Did she really? Yeah, it was pretty funny. She, she like, she thought they were permanent. Dude, that's what my mom thought. That's why she never let me do it in high school. Yeah, I was like, like I wasn't was allowed like, to no. listen to rap music, so let it, getting gold teeth is out the fucking question. But I'm, I'm a grown man now, so there's, there's nothing she could do. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, she saw them, and I was like tripped because she thought they were permanent. When I took them out, and then it was like, you know what? That's actually a good look. Cause she knew it was like an accessory. <laughs> it's an accessory. Yeah. Yo. She's like, oh, it's like jewelry. I get it. And you know, it's like, I, it, that's what it is. You know, it's jewelry. Dude, there's nothing better than being super stony and just laughing your ass off. But you just have full fronts and full bottoms on. And people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. I think I'll probably you got a get lisp the full. And shit. That shit's like, yeah, for sure. You have a yeah. super lisp. Like this. Yeah. Cause like spit is just coming off the 100%, teeth. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Every time. But they're cool, man. You I know they're the saying? fucking sickest shit i've ever loved we were gonna talk about pinky rings and in, in ugk oh yeah hip-hop jewelry man i used to listen to all ugk and Hold they on, that let's, song pinky let's rings. pause real quick let's pause yeah. real quick but it's uh <laughs> so ugk is tight as fuck but then but UGA, then i found UGK that UGK one album with the one with her in the car i forget what that album's called but that had yeah the diamonds and woods and like i don't know if my shit that, just that up. probably had like front but no you're fine i had that uh, diamonds of woods and pinky rings and then like uh they have the front back side to side i think so yeah, yeah that's yeah. that album that that album has us all three of those songs yeah so yeah. that album was sick but i would listen to a lot of pinky rings like <laughs> it just was tight like and then um at the time see i feel like my mic just went out no you're good G. i'm good yeah okay, i no, can't hear myself in the thing no, you're but fine. it's all good. So at the time, I had you can't uh, hear yourself. Oh, nah. you know what? It might be this thing, like that. I'm kicking chords down here too, so I don't know. Oh, there you go. But at the time, um, me and my mom had went to go see. I I got to see a lot of movies with my mom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the time, I went to go see a, a movie called The uh, Legend with Tom Hardy. You ever seen that shit? Fuck yeah! Where, Where he, he plays the twins, th- like his throat slit. At nah, the that's um, that's uh, oh, that's a different one. Uh, that's that's um, Lawless. Lawless. With Wait, Shia LaBeouf. Legend. It's uh, when he plays the twin brother. Yeah, He's the yeah, crazy the Cray, brother the and Cray the fucking, brothers. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. So they, I remember watching that movie, and one of the brothers had his name was Ron, and he had a gold uh, pinky ring, and it said Ron, and <laughs> when it where it said Ron, it had all diamonds in it. And I watched that shit, and I was like, I think I, I walked out of that movie like I think I need a pinky ring. <laughs> and it's funny because my mom was like, I think I got one. Like I got a ring on my fit at the at the crib, and I so I went home. And, yeah, it's this one right here. She gave me this, and it fit. Is that for real? Yeah, she it fit perfectly on my pinky, and it was like cool. I rock with it ever since. Dude, UGK I, and and Tom Hardy. Thank you. Shout out. Yeah, I literally I I saw my first pinky ring with Gucci Mane. And every time Gucci would walk it, I would just be like, dude, I fucking want one. And yeah, they're sick. Dude, the last two days, I've been looking at my first chain, and I'm looking at two different rings. One ring, I'm going to probably, like, I wanted to have it on my pinky. And then one, like, just, like, over here on, like, the big finger or, like, that finger. Are you going to do, like, a stone? Nah. Like I just want I just want a gold one. Like, there's, like, this Mayan one. Like, Although like our, our our family descends from like Aztecs, like they have this Mexican ring that kind of has like a like a Mayan face on the front, and then it has some other bullshit, and then it goes around the the gold. It's all gold, and it goes Sick. around the back the back. And then there's this other company. They have just like a they call it like a flat face, and then it goes around. But I was like, damn, dude, like two rings, and then I want my chain. And then I'm gonna think I'm good. And maybe like get some more rings on this side. Just be like, yeah, <laughs> ice it all out. Dude, not even ice. Like, I just want gold. <laughs> I love gold. Gold is like, my favorite. Gold is yeah. just like, gold is my favorite. But I do, I will say, the ultimate goal is like the Migos grill. I want yeah. straight up just <laughs> diamonds and platinum. That shit's crazy. Lil Wayne, like baby, like Birdman type shit. Like, yeah. just platinum and diamonds yeah. in my teeth. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah, we'll get that. That'll be, dude. I don't give a fuck about shoes. I don't care. I mean, well, maybe I'll, I like, like I'll get some like Adidas. Like I'll get some nice Adidas or Jordans. Like, all right, cool. But I, nothing gets me more than 
the grills. Like, yeah. you know, I see grills in the Migos or like Kodak Black, Takashi 69 when he has some sick grills. He has some wild ones. Dude, uh, what's Tyler his name? Tyler has cool ones. Jody, what's his name? Jody Baller, like the fucking, who's the white guy? I don't know. Oh, oh, I, I know what you're talking about. What the fuck is his um, name? Riff Raff. Riff Raff. Riff Raff, yeah. sick, dude. Dude, Riff Raff's <laughs> fronts, are bro, his Riff grills Raff are so, dope, so tough. Have you guys seen He had that? a crazy run with Action Bronson at the end of my high school career. Dude, really? Action. Dude, so sick. They had birds on a wire. Dude, that song is so He did sick. songs with Migos. Like, Riff straight Raff up. Riff Raff is tight. Riff Raff is underrated, honestly. I'm going to say that. <laughs> He's an interesting guy. I think Riff Raff is Super sick. interesting. Definitely interesting, but he always had the sickest. Dude, I'm about to get my hair braided. Sick. <laughs> I dude, I that's why I've been growing it out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm about to get some weave. I'm about to make the two big ass ones. Again, looks like some big ass horns just going backwards, just like Frenchy. Yeah, French phrase. Yeah. yeah, let's go, nice baby. French phrase. Yeah, dude, that that with the with the chain and the new rings. Yeah, you looking no, fucking like, James yo, Franco. Yo, <laughs> what's up, <laughs> Spring Breakers. Spring Breaker. Dude, fuck. Shut, Shut up. up. Don't Corinne. even say that. No, Harmony Corinne's <laughs> dope as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Harmony Corinne's dope. Gucci's in that movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Harmony Corinne makes cool movies. No, but like that, uh, remember that jeweler I showed you with the, with the scorpion cap? Yeah, people get creative. I no, there's there's this like one jeweler. His name is like Elliot something. You but he make, he, make, he makes grills for like all the celebrities. Like he makes Kim Kardashian's like little gap tooth, oh, little baguettes. Yeah. She make, he makes like crazy like any girl any girl that you could fuck it, any girl cap or whatever you think that you could want he can make it for you and i showed derek this one and it was like someone got like a like a full scorpion body like on their two teeth right here Damn. and it was a cap so like they could just fucking put it yeah in pull whatever. it and pull it out yeah it was tight like it people people get so creative with it it's yeah. like crazy it's jewelry man it's a creative know. outlet dude I, the mouth is where it's at though it was dude, so oh, when you shine I, when you like open your mouth and <laughs> you people see you just with gold on your teeth the the women they fu- no not even the women i'm just telling anybody. you the women though the women like they're like i, yeah. had, they, I open my mouth and like oh shit and it's like i don't even <laughs> i only got two you know what i mean like no yeah. so i had i had this idea i don't even take photos or anything like that but i thought about getting into like you know taking pictures and shit like that because I wanted to like do a little zine on like, I thought the, about a wine club zine. That'd be sick. The wine a wine club zine would be fucking sick. Yes, but yeah, I, I have a lot of crazy ideas. I, I, I thought about doing shorts, a, doing a zine like with our relationship with jewelry, like how how much jewelry, like like how jewelry get is so that, you prominent. Get that book. You should get that book. Well, what are you then, talking about? I know, but then I seen some girl, like some girl on that's super popular on Instagram. She did it, and I was like, fuck. Whatever. Yeah, yeah but what, is she hip-hop? I don't know. I can't hear myself anymore, though. Neither can I. Really? I think I'm, like, kicking chords and shit. There we go. I can hear it now. You fucking with it? Oh, no, yeah, like, sorry. It's those splitters. Can you hear it's that? the splitters. No. Yeah. No? I don't think it's a big deal. I don't want to hear myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Is that good? Yeah, I got it. No, it's good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. It's no, just that yeah, I thought I thought it was sick. No, but doing a, a doing a wino club zine, hell yeah. I have a lot of crazy <laughs> weird ideas for wino club. I, w- I have a lo- I have a lot of ideas on my own. Yeah. That I haven't yet talked about because. Well, what is so that was going to be my next question is that you know you guys have, based on what we were talking about, <laughs> it's like. Know, segmented because we, we go off on tangents because it's the wine but it's the one <laughs> but it's like hey I, i'm enjoying this but yeah. but catch me rambling uh my next thing was like you guys have literally made a lot of stuff dude you guys have literally been open for as long as i've had this space yeah which is just under we're counting it as march of march of this year was when the official will start so a lot has happened <laughs> yeah, in such a me. short time yeah what do you think, what do you guys want to happen for the future? Like the Wino Club coming into 2023, we are less than a week away from the new year. We're, we're moving into True. the, you know, three months from now, you guys are going to be starting up again. Where do you see Wino Club going? What ideas do you want to do? What are you trying to incorporate? Do you want to make it bigger? Do you want to try to keep it the same size? Like, or just anything in general? Yeah, that's something I've struggled with. I mean, like, thought about a lot, you know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily struggled with, but, like, I've put a lot of thought into, like, what is the next appropriate move, 
So like, um, obviously I want it to get bigger. Uh, however, that comes. I don't know how to do it, but it's I'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I would like it to get bigger. I I think it will naturally, but whatever. Also, I'd like to um, be able to somehow start to profit off of it, like make it a thing. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like we did everything for free. Obviously, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna charge anybody to come to Wano Club. Like Wano Club is gonna stay consistently like a free thing for people who ever wants to join. Um, but like, you know, maybe charging vendors and shit like that might be just like technical, like business moves, I think is my next move is trying to figure out shit like that. Like, that makes a lot how of can I grow as like a business? If I look at one, I'll close the business. So things like that. I mean, obviously like allowing my friends to, uh, grow, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that one club is the end of anything. Um, I would like, if everything goes down correctly, I would like Wano Club to be like a platform for my friends to use to jump off to something else and to grow whatever they want to grow or to use it as like, hey, I was a part of that. So obviously I'm qualified to do something else. You know what I'm saying? So that would be cool. Um, a, f a cool little example is that Robert uh, recently, Robert Oxford recently uh, had his first part-time lover set, Solid. solo set. Um and I asked him, it was part-time lover who who put it on there. It wasn't him, but uh, they put of Wino Club. You know what I mean? It was Robert of Wino Club. I so, saw that. Yeah, so that was that was cool, I thought. Um, it was respect to whoever had done it. But, um, yeah, I told Robert, like, hey, you know, you can put that if you want. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you you're your own person, your own DJ. But if it could help you get to another spot, like, please put it. You know what I'm saying? I always tell my friends, like, put it on your resume. <laughs> I was like, I don't get, Fucking I don't a. give a fuck. Tell him you do all the design. Tell him you do everything. I don't give a shit. So, but I just like I always say like, yeah, if this can help you get to another like level of what you're ever you're trying to do or accomplish, like please like do it. You know. So in the long run, I don't know when this will happen, but I'd like to grow Wino into a point of like allowing my friends to like do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to be able to start like a website so you can be able to book individual people if you want or book a group as a whole. Like a tattoo, like a tattoo shop. Exactly. Sort of like that, you know? And then like ultimate, like would be sick. Like, again, I just don't know how these things are going to happen. I don't know how it's just all ideas. Of it'll right work now, out. But like, it'll work out. It would be cool if like people can have their own merch. Hmm. So like if Nisa is your favorite DJ, like she has her own line of merch that you can go purchase and then, you know, she can, get some dough off that you know what i'm saying so like whatever whatever's the right move for wino would just be like how i can help my friends grow obviously like i have to grow too you know what i'm saying so but it's all just trying to plan what could be best for the group and what could be best for the park so that's it's i mean everything i've ever done has been so not planned and just like hey this sounds like a good move like why don't we do that and try that out I think this year would be a little bit more planning as far as like what we're going to do and how we want to do it. Uh, so that would be the main difference is maybe just a little bit more planning, but again, I want to keep it organic and I want to keep it like a free flowing thing. Cause so many people come and contribute and I, and I want to listen to everybody's like ideas. Cause everyone has an idea of what they want from one club. Mm -hmm. Everyone has like, a, like I've since the start of it, I've like, Hey, you should do this. You should try this. You should talk to these people. It's like, yeah, yeah, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it has to be what's best for everybody and what's best for the park. So as long as that, all that aligns, like I'm down for any idea, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever is good, I'm cool with. So as far as what's next for Wino, it's just growth. Like just expect growth. I hope more people, you know what I'm saying? I hope no problems. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope we just grow, you know, like get more eyes on us and hopefully we can do it. Cause I don't think there's much difference to what we're doing to a lot of the ill ass festivals and shit like that. Like it's just smaller scale shit. So if we keep growing, something's going to happen. I would definitely agree. Yeah. I would definitely agree on that. Uh, I think staying stagnant is just like not not where it's at <laughs> no definitely not no you need to keep growing to yeah 
to be better, but at what level, you know, are you going to be growing at, right? What are right. you trying to, what are you trying the, to achieve? What's the goal? And yeah, that's sort of like an unknown thing because I look at people like, um, you know, I don't know if you've heard of like Soul Sundays. Soul Sundays? No. Yeah, they're like a dope little event. You know what I'm saying? I look at people like them and think that they're doing a great job of what they're doing. Um, but then I look at people like part-time and that's a crazy idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at people like I haven't got a chance to see them yet. I've been trying to, but uh, it's just been you know caught up with shit. But lo-fi, dude, yeah, uh, long play, play, long play, long lo-fi. play, yeah, yeah, G, like those guys do a cool thing. You know what I mean? So like, dude, G's G is fuck. So I uh, I look up to these people and what they're doing and the ideas of what they're doing, um, and try to take the best idea and implement it to what we're doing. Cause obviously I'm coming behind all these people. Do you not know G? No, 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 I've never been there. I've never met people. Like I said, I Dude, don't know I'll anybody. You. you know what I'll I'm saying? I'll give you the contact. Well, I'll make that connection. Word. Right? That'd easy. Be super easy. Cause it's, yeah. Like I said, I was in a bubble, man. I wasn't doing anything, but, uh, I, I, I see these people now that I, that my eyes are open and, uh, and I think they're doing dope shit. So like, I think, like anything that comes after shit, it has to take the best thing of what came before. So like you take a little bit from them, you take a little bit from someone else, you take a little bit from something else and implement it in your own way. And then that's how growth happens. So I don't know what we're going to well, do. That's not even just growth. You know what that is? That's your, that's your own style. Right. Exactly. So I don't know what's going to happen as far as like where it's going to go. I just know that I have a few, avenues that i could take it to and it's just determining what's the best one or what sounds most fun if i'm being honest with you it's like what am i gonna have the most fun with my friends doing and that'll make my decision because this is again it's the best for the parking it's the best for the group i don't make any solo decisions best off like personal gain or personal growth because if i had my way ain't no one know it's me <laughs> so it's gonna be hard to do man. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to do. right but <laughs> Like I said, that's the that's my goal. Is like I would just like my friends to succeed, and uh, and create a, a a good community. And it's really just culture. We're just creating culture. It's just all culture. Dude, I'll definitely say, I I would, I would have to agree with that because of the fact of the matter is, dude. It it really is, like the vibe and whatever energy that you guys are creating in the park every Wednesday. It's enough for me to literally change my entire schedule around. But Wednesdays, <laughs> like, don't even, don't even, don't bother me. Right. <laughs> Wednesdays afternoons is, dude, I swear to God, when March happened, bro, I'll be there every Wednesday. If I'm not there, it, it had to have been a super emergency. <laughs> right. Straight up. Right. Like, I remember I didn't go to Wino Club one of the, like, the, the third to last or, like, the second to last week because I had to roast. And I was like, bro, I was so pissed. I was like, I'm not even going to Wino because I had a group. I had a group of people that we went with every Wednesday. Me and my roommate Ray Ray, me Ray Ray, Allison, Danny, like Sav, some other people. Yeah, like, you were bringing crew, <clears throat> dude. I rolled deep. Yeah, rolled deep, like eight to ten people yeah. minimum. Yeah, and we'd have like cheese and charcuterie boards. Yo, let's stop. Playing. Yeah, like bro, we we came out. Tough. People came prepared. I would that would be the most shocking thing to me. I'm such an underprepared person. So people would, <laughs> people would come with full blown things, and it'd be it'd be so sick. Like, I'm telling you right now, as soon as March comes, bro. So I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm gonna show you guys afterwards. Like, uh, we have some new coffee coming out, and mm-hmm. the logo. I think you guys are gonna fuck with pretty tough. But I definitely want to talk to you guys about some stuff that I've been thinking about. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, one last thing I wanted to ask you before we get out of here. Who came up with the logo? Cause I I have the shirt. I have the shirt. I rock that shit. Uh, that one, the wine, the wine, the wine bottle, and the, and the record. Yeah. So we've gone through a couple iterations of the logo. Um, the uh, I I'll say I've had a hand in anything. Like everything you see with Wano Club is. I'm not trying to say like it's all me. You know what I'm saying? But it's me. Like I I do literally everything. Like. Whatever you see going on is me. Um, everything filters through me. Nothing gets like 
done without me seeing it or me saying yes. Now that's not to say that like I have like power over everybody or what I whatever I think is dope is dope, right? I'm just saying I get the like the final cut. So like the first logo, I don't know if you saw it. It was the WC, right? Just that it like was the, w- the wine bottles. Yeah. So there was a, there was a first iteration of it where I had um drawn out yeah vinyl written in bottles yep. and then club written in records mm-hmm. um that was the first idea of it that switched to like obviously you know me just not being like a stupid consumer i understand what a logo is and what a good logo is supposed to be so you simplify and you try to find the best thing that's easily recognizable blah 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 so yeah, we simplified to that WC. Um, I was working with an artist, Ian. Uh, big shout out to Ian. I don't know if you'll ever hear this, but sick dude. Again, I just met this dude at a dispensary just telling him like, hey, this is what I do. And he was like, yo, I, I'm trying to do some more design work like if you ever need anything. It's like, cool. So yeah, I would just tell him like, I want this. Do, you know, do something, like help me out. And he we would collaborate on it. And then... Um, Funny enough was, I forget how Z came back into the picture, but a lot of what you'll see, like, art-wise through Wano Club now is done by Z or MERS. So both really prolific artists, in my opinion. Like, they both have their own style, and it's all sick. Like, Z does this, like, crazy graphic design, and then MERS is predominantly, like, a graffiti artist, and he's ill, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I've used both their stuff throughout the course of last season. Um, Z, I had known since like high school. Somehow, I went I went to uh, High Sec High, which is like yeah in Point Loma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Liberty Station. So uh, there's like three high schools within like a football field away from each other. So Z had went to one of the high schools and I had went to another high school. He was around, you know what I'm saying? We weren't like homies in high school, but... After high school is when I got to know him a little better. And uh, whatever, I hadn't seen him in a long time. All of a sudden, he comes back up. And he's like, dude, this dude's a dope artist. Like, I fuck with Z's work. So, like, me and him started meeting up. Just talking ideas. Shit like that. So, uh, I really have to go to a lot of the credits. This new logo, like the one you'll see on the shirt and stuff like that, to Z. Z was doing a lot of um, a lot of work on his own, just coming up with crazy mm-hmm. ideas and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, I had told him something like I would like uh, a wine bottle being poured, and instead of liquid coming out, it would be like records, <clears throat> yeah. like instead of like mimicking the liquid, whatever. Like it would go small and go big, you know what I'm saying? Like the liquid's pouring out. That's very interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting concept. So that's what I'll come. I'll come to these artists and stations and shit like that. And then they'll. I, it's just like these people are dope enough to like sort of figure out what's <laughs> at what I mean. You know what I'm saying? And then like, so I think I said something like that to him. And then you get the iteration of Wino with the, I think what it is, is the, I don't know. I wish I was wearing it, but it's the, it's the wine being poured out onto the record. And it like morphs into the record. I believe is what the logo is. That that's not the new one though. Is it not here? No, the new one. The new one that you just sold on the T-shirt was the. It's it's the it's it's the wine bottle and the and the record walking hand in hand that was on the. Oh, that's on the back. So. So that's the front logo. Oh shit! Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. You're good. I can get to that too. So that was the front logo. So that's the idea behind the front logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I remember that one. So and then I've seen the new ones. So you're talking about the... The back logo. Which is funny. I don't know. Not a lot of people know this, but you're talking this thing. Dude, what? Okay, before yeah. you leave, I'm taking a photo of that. It's yeah, so Yeah, that's so sick. <laughs> Except mine has a little, like, blunt that he's smoking. Yeah, of course he is. That, that, that the shirts don't have. But, so that's what you're talking about, is that... Design. That logo. Yeah, Dude. so... um. Again, I would meet with Z, so I would take time out to um, meet up with Z, and Z is just a, Z is just an artist, 
Like that's all he is. Like he he works at Vino Carta, which is sick. Dude, what? Yo, I, mean, I like, love that fucking place. I'm a, I'm gonna be honest, and I'm just gonna be like, I helped him get that job at Vino Carta because he. Uh, <laughs> it's like so. I mean, he had went to the interview. I'm and, just gonna be honest. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, I'm so glad too because it's sick. But he, I, we had been working with Vino and like been doing a bunch of shit for them, and we did the natural wine festival and shit like that. I was for gonna him. say, it's like, why are you not working with Vino Carta? Oh yeah. Oh, you are okay. I mean, I haven't, it's, we had a couple of things happen in the last couple of gigs that I was booked for, but I, they book us for stuff. Um, good, good. For they should. I, I used to do it more, but yeah. Um, yeah, we, I love them over there. They're fantastic. But Patrick, Patrick is the homie. Patrick really likes what we do. And, uh, Z, I told Z, I'm like, yo, just, um, they're hiring. Like, go get that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I was like, I had heard they're like, their flyer dude was leaving and not to like diss the dude or diss Vino, but like, I remember Vino Carto was like, Hey, like we have a dude like who does flyers, like, you know, cause I would be doing stuff for him. And they'd be like, we can like, you can talk with him and he can like make a flyer for you. And I like spoke to the cat one time, you know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, you're whack. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> his shit was sort of, his shit doesn't say, yeah, his shit wasn't that cool. Like, Z was just making doper shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And then like when he, I heard he left or like it was his last, he was leaving. So I was like, Z go get, go get the job and like see if you can do their shit, you know, and do their flyers. I remember that. So, uh, he had went to the interview and was like, Patrick was interviewing him and he goes, yeah, I do the design work for Wano club. And then he's like, Oh, Wano club. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think, I think I helped him get the job a little bit, but he, I mean, I'm glad. I'm just gonna go out on a rent. Yeah, out of yeah. Here. <laughs> I'm glad because now he does do the he does do the flyers for Vino Carta now. They look buttery. No, I I <laughs> does do the flyers for Vino Carta now. So it's so sick. But um, he he's just a great artist, man. I can't say anything but that. Like he just made a calendar that's super dope too. Um, but he's just a fantastic artist, and I would meet with him and just like, I think this specific time he had come over to my apartment. Um. And we were just smoking and talking about shit. And he had a sketchbook. And, dude, I don't even know when this was compared to even I've had T-shirts in mind. But this is what I'm a genius, right? No, I'm just kidding. But so I had the, we were just meeting up and we uh, I had seen his sketchbook. He was just going through his sketchbook with me. And he had all these dope little fucking sketches. Um, and he was just flipping through the pages and randomly saw like a super, super rough sketch of that idea. And was like, damn, that's sort of sick, right? So kept going through the sketches, but I had that one locked in my mind for however long. And then when it came down to like, hey, I want to do a t-shirt, I remember because I kept, I met up with Z again. He's just the guy. So I met up with Z. And I go like, well, I want to do a t-shirt. You know, this is what I want to do. Um, off, the, off the jump, it was I want logo on the left breast, big design on the back. That's my favorite kind of t-shirt easy um and so that was that was what i wanted uh we were locking down the logo on the left because i think we were still running the old logo at the time we were locking that down and then z i think had some z had some dope ideas i remember z having some cool new ideas but me sort of just being like no like <laughs> i want that image of the record and the vinyl like walking side by side. And I think he had like recreated that from something he had seen um, from like some crazy poster or something like that. But that's what I just, cause like, that's what I want. Um, that's what it's going to be type thing. Like okay. this is what, this is what I, I think the first t-shirt should be. So we locked that in. Um, he did some, some, uh, some changes to it, like some updates and stuff like that. Killed it made the rest of the shirt all that extra stuff was him you know what i'm saying like the whole like archway what it says uh i mean like i had told him like yo i want like you know morley field i want like 2022 because you know i knew i was like this is gonna solidify the season like i'm not it's not you're not gonna see it anymore um so yeah it was so just, it's gonna change like every season like a new like a new t-shirt design or something yeah you'll like get something new like you won't ever see that one again you know nice. what i'm saying like i love that yeah like that one's done you know um but that that so if you have that shirt you know you were coming to the first one you know so uh yeah next next season you'll get different look different everything 
uh, well, I'll, I actually hit up Z not too long ago. I said, like, we're going to meet up after the holiday and talk about the new look and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, that's just a big shout out to Z. Z puts in a lot of crazy work. Uh, he's just a crazy artist. I think what he does is just so dope. So uh, big shout out to him. A lot of it's him. Obviously, I'm picking and choosing, uh, which is the easy part because I have a lot of good material to choose from. So, yeah, it's just curating what I think is going to be sick through all my friends who <laughs> are actually talented. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fuck yeah. these people are for real talented. So, yeah, just helping out. And then MERS. I want to do church with MERS. Like, I want to do shit with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I th even homemade. I'll spill some beans on. I don't like. I don't know what I. Th I come up with so many stupid ideas. Like, they're not stupid though. Because yeah, if they're working, yeah. then like they're fucking great ideas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But like, I, there's so many ideas I want to do for like merch and stuff like that. It's just I don't know what to do. I don't know how. You know what I mean? If people were down, like, but with the homemade shit, I thought it'd be sick. Like, to have all of Merz's characters. So we have characters for everyone who's like a core member of Wano Club and like Charlie Brown character type thing. Sick. Yeah, we have like those. We've been running those for a minute. Those were flyers. So like, we have a character of Nisa, Veronica, Chris, Justin, me, like all in like Snoopy, Charlie Brown characters. That is so fucking dope. Yeah. So Dude. those are sick. And I want to do a a shirt of that. I had a <laughs> I had an idea of all of them chilling, like almost like Last Supper style. That would be. Sick. You know what I mean? All the Wano Club characters, but then I also have like you know idea of like having those guys wearing like homemade shit, so it's collaborating with like local San Diego brands and shit like that. So it's just like you'll, dude. I'm telling you, it's like <laughs> the amount of weird ideas I get for this shit is ridiculous. So uh, what's gonna land and stick, and what's gonna get into your guys' hands are gonna be hopefully dope. So. Well, we'll leave it right there. Yeah, dude. Well, tell everybody, guys, both of you, like, if you want to just do Wano Club, that's fine. If you want to do your personals, totally fine. Uh, but tell people where they can find you, what to expect, like when is Wino Club coming back, uh, social media platforms, and also just like what to expect for this coming summer, or yeah. spring and summer. Um, obviously, as like at Wino Club, I think underscore, yeah, at Wino Club underscore um, would be us. There are some other things out there that you might see. It's not us. <laughs> at Wino Club underscore. Um, and it's W I W I. It's like vinyl with a W. W I N Y L Club. Yeah, it's uh. I think it's underscore it's vinyl club underscore. Nah, it's just vinyl club no, underscore. It, that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. vinyl club underscore. underscore yeah. It's a play on wine and vinyl, but okay. Um, yeah, that's so that's what that is. Um, information is probably all on there, but like, be back in March. It's when the time changes. March. I don't know what date, but it's like sometime in March. If you follow the page, you'll be updated as it goes. Let's go. You'll hear more from me as the time comes. And you will definitely hear it from me. Yeah. I'd be like, yo, Wino Club's coming. You need to be there. Sick, sick. Yeah. So like, <laughs> in, tap in. Yeah, so Wino Club, at Wino Club underscore, information is there. You can always message me, too. I try to be nice to everyone that messages me. It's hard to cater to everybody, but <laughs> I try to I try to reach back if you have any questions. But, um... As far as like independent DJs who are um, involved, I should put up everyone, but Nisa has her own situation popping. Chris has his own situation popping. Veronica has her own situation popping as far as like social media is going. Um, a lot of these people are independent. So they are a part of Wano, but you can hit them up individually for whatever you need, Although, whatever you want. Sometimes me and Veronica are a duo. Right, you can get yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes people like us <laughs> together. So. so I've had people come up to me and be like, hey, we'd like to book Wano Club, but I just want the girls or something <laughs> like that. And it's like, that's cool. Yeah, it's, That's cool. That's, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, for real. Come, Yeah, if you, if I will be that person too. If you need me, if, if you need me to be like your booking person, I, you can hit up Wano Club and just say who you need. And I got you and we can make it work. Yeah. Um, obviously some money's like, going to be involved, but yeah, I feel like all our social media is on there too. Like it might be, it might not be. I'm really bad with social media. Derek, so, well, Derek's vinyl. I'm Nisa with a one and a four as a I in the A. It's complicated. So wait, say it, say it first so everybody can hear it. N one S S four H Veronica's underscore chinkies. 
We got Chris at Chris, Chris and Skywalker. Chris, you could do Skywalker. Chris Skywalker or Cowbell or Chris. Cowbell Chris. He oh. has both Instagrams for those. He'll people. answer either. And then that's him. And then that's pretty much if you if you like predominant DJs. Anyone else like Robert? Robert, I know is that Balearic. Balearic SD, I think, is what he's he's putting yeah, out. Something like that. I'd have to really check that one to see what it is. I'm bad with that shit. Wino, yeah. Just at Wino Club. Yeah, you can at ask Wino, me. You'll see. DM, you can DM. fucking. Whoever you need, just let me know. We'll, we'll pop it off. A lot of these people. Like I mean, I got to give a shout out to Dan, Danica, too. She's yeah, sick. Danica. Ricardo's dope. Like, all these people that come through in DJ. So if you see anyone you like, even for the forthcoming season, if you see anyone you like, just let me know. And I got you. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll get you matched up with who you need to get matched up with. There you go. And that's that. So, yeah, we're back in March, whatever, Wednesdays. March to November. Roughly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. March to November. Every week for you. You know what I'm saying? So Every Wednesday, baby. If you miss one, don't worry. You'll be, we'll be out there. Again. You'll be devastated and you'll wish <laughs> you shouldn't have missed it. Like yeah. straight up. And you'll be back next Wednesday. Right. Bring bring whatever you need. Bring all the homies. Bring a cheese and charcuterie board. Right. Bring wine. Bring blunts. Bring spliffs. Whatever you want. You could donate to the club too. With Yo, that let's shit pop too. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, can give, you can give me some of that shit too if you want. But Yo. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's about it. I think. Shout out to everybody who's been involved. Um, again and then yeah so, so we'll just do a at bean show taco i think is their shit too mm-hmm. at goldie records company um at esquina wine all of them are valid people valid club members you know what i'm saying so check them all out like they Let's all go. do their own thing so if you ever need anything of their services either they are fantastic um yeah that's about it i can't think of anything else or anybody else all right nisa anything else uh, me and Veronica are, be, are gonna be at Part Time Lover in January. Yeah, yeah. At some point, I forget what the date is. <coughs> I think it's the twenty second. Yeah, or something it's on the twenty like second. It's on Sunday, so it's it's just gonna be me and me and Veronica there. So I always tell everybody, yo, tag me, tag at Cafe Green. I will promote it. I will post it. Like, yo, once you've been on the show, and especially Wino Club, like. You guys have done so, like, I I mean, I didn't really get into it, but, like, you guys do so much for me and, like, my own Damn. personal mental and what you provide in the, sp- in, like, in the park. Super, like, beyond grateful. Well, thank so, you. No, thank you. Anything I can do to help for any of your members, just tag me. I will repost it. I'll let everybody know. Yeah, well, me and Veronica are going to be at Part Time Lover on the 22nd. It'll just be me and her. The whole ten to two, so. <clears throat> Dude, we should uh, we should figure out a day that'd be dope where we can just come spin here and then hopefully have get some business for you to come through. Dude, yeah. If you want to do that, I'm fucking yeah. down. We can you make it a mean? thing. So I'll give you guys an entire day. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a fucking day. Just like <laughs> no, I'm tight. I'm not even lying. <laughs> yeah, we can, I'm we not even lying. Some or just like come that. through. But like that's what I was saying. Like we'll talk afterwards. Like yeah, we'll talk. Yeah. We'll talk after this. But I have some ideas. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no, I'm. I'm 100% down. Let's make this happen. Sick. Sure. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you again. And like I tell everybody who comes on the show, once you're on, you will never not be on again. Like you can come on anytime. And uh, just thank you so much for being here. And uh, we'll have to have like a round two with like other people. Oh, other dude, people we should get some. It. We'll get we'll get everybody on here. Yeah. 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 When, yeah. When everybody can make it. When everybody's good. I, you know, everyone's busy and shit. So it's yeah. the holidays. Yeah, that's you. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Peace. Bye. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. That was an amazing podcast. Derek, Nisa. Oh, man. I'm just so hyped. And I can't wait. I cannot wait until Vinyl Club comes back in March or April, whenever it is. So, guys, if you haven't been there yet, Morley Field pretty much whenever they say so follow the instagram at vinyl club guys again thank you so much and last but not least i want to thank everyone around the world who continues to support caffeine and green week in and week out whether you're buying coffee listening to the podcast whatever i appreciate all you guys so much and guys it's 2023 we have amazing things lined up we have amazing guests we have another year let's get it popping y'all i'm super excited and guys i'll see you next week peace